Welcome to the land of long live play where greatness is always waiting. Welcome to the PlayStation Experience. I'm your host, Delvin Cox, and joining me as always is the Platinum Princess herself, Miss Haley Nicole Miller. How you doing, Haley? I am a very tired individual, but also Delvin Jr., for reference, do not put your head that close to the camera. <laughs> yes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> also, <laughs> also joining me, our Lord and Savior, Lord Snurts. How you doing, buddy? Hello, everybody. I'm doing fine. Thank you. I see also, you the 1950s radio host era. <laughs> Yes. yes, sir. I can turn this voice on on and off any time you want. That's right. Our boys in blue is getting Hitler what for. Also joining us in stick figure 1940s <laughs> stop motion animation, my son Delvin. How you doing, Delvin? Hello, everyone. I am the man who's going to sell you things that you don't need. I wish you'd sell yourself a goddamn <laughs> webcam that worked right. But I digress. At least there's not tape on the lens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Haley. You know, you, you get at least one of those a month. <laughs> it's fine. That's a better joke than half the half the nonsense we'll talk about later that I keep receiving. So there you go. Yeah. Podcast like it's 2004. That's our motto. Hey, so Donnie, if you're wondering, this is why we were this is why we were late. We were trying to we were trying to troubleshoot this. Yes, apparently my internet's working fine, but the internet on the same goddamn network is not working fine. But it doesn't matter. Haley, how's your week been? Uh I have not had a day off since the eleventh, but I don't have one until Good Friday. That sounds great. Keep going. Uh yes. Uh, I've been watching my boy Rick just fuck it up. So, you know, that's, that's good. And even though I'm working a lot, I have actually finished a couple games. Um, I finished Immortals of Avium. So, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't think it's overtime. I haven't reached 80 yet. Um, 80 hours, but, uh, Immortals of Avium. So I think everybody should give this a shot when they want, when they get a chance to, if it comes to like game pass or PS plus, um, it's a very good game. Um, it's stories, uh, very well. Um, but I think it got a bad rap just because, uh, from the trailers, it's, it's very quippy, but the characters are much more like like they're more fleshed out than that. Oh, sounds quite familiar. Like another game I, I played last year. Yeah, I know. I, I said I know it weird, Donnie. Go ahead, double dude. I know that's the main reason. I know that's the main reason I avoid the game. Um, I remember seeing like some gameplay and thinking it looked cool, but my god, that protagonist just seems like annoying, and our. And like my father already mentioned, I already experienced one magic fantasy game that had an annoying protagonist. I did not want to experience two. Uh, okay. So to further my point, uh, first things first, Delvin Jr., you may want to check the private message. Uh, second of all, um, so what I mean by the game has a very good story, but it fleshes out its characters very well, is that... While it seems to be quippy and like just like a standard MCU flick off the bat, the story is deeper than that, and it's not everything is not as it seems. And I liked it the I like the way that it plays out as you go through it, um, as you unlock more of your magical abilities um, to solve more puzzles and stuff that come come up through the story. Um, you learn more of the stakes of what's going on, why this war is happening. Um, and it, it culminates in a way that very much left it open for a sequel that I would love to see, but I don't think we're going to get. Um, because as... Do you think the marketing... Sorry, go ahead. 
No, no, go ahead. Go. I was gonna ask, like, do you think the marketing like had a huge impact on this game sales, or like, do you think like the way it was shown off is kind of threw some people away, especially since it came out like in the same year as Forspoken or Redfall, where like those games were pretty like talkative. I don't think it was the talkativeness of the characters because there are segments of this game where characters don't talk, like you're just fighting, right? Um, what I think the issue with this game is it just launched in a bad window. Like its original release was like July when nothing was coming out, but then it got delayed and it came out right alongside like Baldur's Gate and a bunch of other stuff. So it just kind of got buried. Like it just had a bad release window. Uh, it's not as bad as, say, choosing to release a game in between Battlefield and Call of Duty. Uh, but, you know, um, it, it was straight up, like, just a bad release time and there was nothing they could do. Um, I picked the game up for, like, 40 bucks, and I'm halfway through a New Game Plus playthrough. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm halfway through yes, a new game. I am Barack Obama. Uh, <laughs> I'm halfway through a new game plus playthrough on the hardest difficulty uh at this point. Um just to see how the difference in difficulty is. Um and and I'm not really finding it all that all that hard, uh except for when you get into like Oh, you've got like 50 enemies coming at you at once. But like I really think the design of like each of the different types of magic is is nice. Uh it the particle effects are like real like <laughs> particle. Yeah. Well, no, like Sparkly. I also think another reason this game may have struggled is that uh as you guys know, I really like Ray Narvaez Jr who does streams over on Twitch. And he tried, to he, he, he tried to stream this game when it launched, and it was just impossible for him to stream because when, like, it just destroyed the bitrate from all the particle effects. Like, they're that, like, there's so many of them. It just made so the bitrate like of the stream, like, impossible. Uh, actually worse than Delvin's webcam. Like, which fault. is saying something. It's your fault, not mine. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, from what I've seen in the game, it does look very like trippy, colorful. Like I, I should, uh, you know, have my favorite musical instrument, bong, and uh, you know, enjoy the pretty colors. Yeah. Yes. Um. Also, the story is only about like 10, 12 hours. Uh, there's a bunch of side stuff you can do as well, but it, it definitely was a fun time for me. I'm, I'm glad I, I picked it up and played through it. Um. I'm also. Um. I got back into uh, the other Immortals, Phoenix Rising, for a little bit, and um, it it feels really hard to get back into that when you left off in like the middle of it. So I uh, didn't play too much of that. I've started What the Golf, which you know that's a fun time. It just came out on PlayStation. Um, which, what the Golf? Yes, the game is called What the Golf. Um, is that a, a Donny-ass game? It is a Donny-ass <laughs> game. Donny has, in fact, played it. But I have a question for Donny in the chat. The fuck is this game's problem with cats, man? Why are, like, all the optional objectives knock if, over the cats? If you haven't noticed, Donny has beef with cats, so we, we can't ask about cats. <laughs> yeah. There was, an, uh, there was an H2O emergency. No. <laughs> uh, no. Um... No, so for yes, example, I will now, his webcam eventually. There you go. It's in its way. No, you will not steal your dad's webcam. Uh, I forbid you from doing that. Secondly, uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you seen how his cat treats him? Oh, we no, saw Sunday. I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sunday. We, we clearly yeah, saw I, cat treat him. Hey, Very I have not had it. I have not had a chance to watch Shaq yet. Uh, you, know, you don't have to watch. Like... Just go to the cow to pug clip of the cat smacking Donnie in the back of his big ass head and making him <laughs> spill water all over himself. <laughs> <laughs> he just wanted a drink. Um, no. He just wanted a drink. Sure, Jonathan, he was thought of yeah. No problem. 
Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, so, right. like, what the golf is essentially a golf game designed by people who know nothing about golf. Um, and so, for example, uh, you, it's like, hey, uh, here's here's your objective: hit all the bowling pins over. Um, that's usually but, what you do at golf. Uh, here's my favorite part, though. Uh, one of the maps is like, hey, hit the pole. And, you know, in most golf games, you have the directional arrow that gives you, like, your amount of force and, like, which direction. Yes. So you fire. You don't fire the ball. You fire the, dire- fire the directional, po- uh, like, indicator instead of the ball to hit the Some pole. Part. Or, like, in one map, you are a, a, a carpet trying to knock over bowling pins. This sounds fucking terrible. Yeah, great. <laughs> I'm not even gonna hold you. This sounds hey, awful. What, uh, where, what part of this is this golf? Like, I mean, at least so, frisbee golf is more on brand, I would think. But like, what what's the okay, bowling so, have to do with golf? So it is literally like each of the areas is like themed. So the area I'm in now is golf, but okay. super hot at the same time. Super hot. Yeah, I like super hot. Oh. I'm talking about like golf. I'm talking about women or something like that. Okay. Never mind. No, no, no. Was... Like golf mixed with the game super hot. Not 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 as uh, not as interesting oh. at all. I was hoping for super That's hot golf cool. myself. Shut up, boy. Oh. <laughs> hey, 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 hey man. This game this game was like it was like 10 bucks. I I'm having fun with it. You should ask for a refund. Okay. All right. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, I, know, I know, I know, it's not Steve, but you should still ask for a refund. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get my uh, money back? I do gotta ask. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I do gotta game. ask. Um, how is this? How is this game like? Like how like far apart of a golf game is it? Like is it like similar to like a more simple golf games? Like I know you played Curse Golf, um, last year, but like, is it like simple? So, is it like similar to that, or maybe like it's like it's entirely its own thing? Like it's only gameplay style. It's entirely its own thing because Curse to Golf actually had interesting, like an interesting like mechanic thing. Because again, you golf, but you have to deal with the cards in Curse to Golf. Like that, that was an interesting mechanic. Here, the mechanic essentially seems to be okay. Hit the pole, but uh, your your ball is now a cube, or you're bowling instead of golfing. Or you're driving a motorcycle. A very game. I know many people will hit the pole. So uh, I, I I looked up like I did. A, well, I'm just gonna ignore the pole for a minute. No, uh, you're not. Uh, I looked up. I looked up what the golf. First thing that comes up is their website, and it says the golf game for people who hate golf. Yeah. Why the fuck would I want to play that? That's a terrible so, thing. I thought that was hilarious, and I'm looking at this thing, and I'm just like, yeah, this is totally a Donny game. No, Donnie says Which he is doesn't funny because like Donnie said he didn't like it. So it's not I don't know. It has the childish switch graphics. It's golf. There's a cat. Well, what's not to like for Donnie? Oh, again, I, let, let me let it's me just point out. It's not a golf game. So I know, when you, I know, I'm just teasing. When you complete a level, you can do the level again, and it's literally like, hey, here's a different objective. Ninety percent of the second of the three objectives you have are all about knocking cats over. Like what? <laughs> What, what is if, this game's problem with cats? So what if you don't want to complete the level in the first place? Then, then you don't have to do it. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, this game will feel I fun. don't. I don't know what to tell you. I'm happy. Oh, Haley, thanks for June does reminding us. June does want a water update. Ah, uh, drinking that. That is water. not water. <laughs> that tells you everything you need to know. Okay. <laughs> so that you put that in front, that is not water. For reference, this is absolutely not water. Uh, I currently need the caffeine because I worked 18 hours uh, in, like, the past 12. So, yes, I know that doesn't make sense, but yes. Uh, Secondly, uh, I got the Brita filter jug that Delvin sent me. Guess what? Water still tastes terrible out of it. It's it's not good. (laughs) Haley's going to die. Her blood has been made of just syrup, syrup at this point. Just pure... Canadian syrup. No, no, no. It's, a, it's enhanced syrup. Yes. Right. If it's Canadian, that means it must taste a little fresher. You know, Canada is all about their syrup. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I, I did try it. 
And I've continued to use my water enhancers because no. <laughs> well, also, we we in tried. the past two days, Whoa. I have had five energy drinks. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Each, each one with 180 milligrams of caffeine. <laughs> uh, my blood pressure. Uh, uh, my blood pressure is rising know, just hearing this. I feel like it's a race to death between Haley and Donnie. They're trying to out death each other. <laughs> I feel like I'm like, I'm gonna live two more years. Has like fuck that. I'm gonna beat you in three. <laughs> Oh yeah. my god. You know what will go good with this uh, Italian cold cut combo? <laughs> Cheese whiz and a Mountain Dew. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you, Deb, because that's what I was trying to say. It's just water. I work with children. Yeah. <laughs> hey, actually, yeah, Deb, no, I do no, have... like I I will agree. It is the enhan- the, the water enhancements that they have nowadays is less bad than what we think of them back in the day when it was like Kool-Aid and shit like that. It's not Kool-Aid. It, it, it's literally I know, just exactly. like two squirts it, stir and you no can sugar, definitely still taste water. Low, low calories, blah 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 blah. Um it is not the same, but it is fun to to tease out the situation. Although, yeah, although yeah, yes, because, it is. Uh, water is is great. <laughs> I love water. Yes! <laughs> it's essential uh, to your body. Yeah, you need water to live. It's not like an optional thing. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> like, okay. It's like, no thank you, water. If I am no. drinking water and I put a water enhancer in it, it's still water. It just has. <laughs> it, it just has. <laughs> A, a taste to it that I can stand. <laughs> if, you could, uh, okay. if it works for you, that's good. That's good. If it works for right. you, that's good. Also, the energy drink I have in my fridge, I have two more of them in my fridge right now. Um, uh, it, it, it tastes like, it, it, it tastes like a, an orange creamsicle. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Orange creeps. Oh, yeah, it's called it's called Orange Dreamsicle by Monster. It's very good. Yeah, that's also, gotta be healthy for you. Anything by Monster uh, has to be good for you. Yeah. Also, also, by the way, <laughs> by the way, I only started drinking these things on Wednesday. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Start, 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 start. How's your week? Hold I'm on. Doing, Hold on. Uh, I'm not finished yet. We got thrown off. I played another game. What game did you play? Okay, all right. The game uh, of life. Russian roulette, just ran in goddamn traffic. <laughs> it's about the Roman hey, aquafillers. Hey, it's a trophy <laughs> that finished life in three days. She's just trying to speed run it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, I <laughs> I played more Cyberpunk and I had a good time. There you go. Also, uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 comes out on Friday uh, and I'm very excited. So. Okay. That's a good one. I don't know if I'm playing that. I have too many games played this week on, on well, not even Friday, just this week in general. Sure. Lone in the Dark comes out tomorrow. No, Wednesday. Weird day for a game to come out. What comes out tomorrow on Wednesday? Alone in the Dark. Yeah, that's a weird release date. Yes, it is very weird. You said right. a game will come out like Tuesday or like Friday, but like Wednesday. Hey, yeah. I have five different flavors of water enhancer in my fucking uh, pantry right now. I've got Orange Crush, Nest oh. Tea, Grape Kool Aid, uh, Orange Kool Aid, and and uh, yes. and. <laughs> <laughs> you like you had it. We were good, you know, and then you had yes, to list out the skin. flavors. Like we were so good, we were moving on. Everything. <laughs> hey, was hey. They're okay. still water. Like grape, they just you know, taste grape. different. Grape Kool Aid. You have the purple stuff. You might as well drink Sunny D. Yeah. Uh, Sunny D is tasty. I don't know what you're complaining about. <laughs> grape Kool Aid. <laughs> you mix yeah. that up. You mix that up with like like some um, cough medicine and some Sprite. Devin, yeah, I think you better shut up. Yeah. I think you better stop Sprite talking. And cough, cough medicine. This guy's making yeah, cough medicine. Dirt. He's what making a virgin fuck? flaming mo. No, he, he's, he's making dirty spike. We're not we're not even to do that here. It's not time to week, sir. Okay, no, hold on. What the fuck is dirty sprite? We're not having that conversation. Oh my god. Nope. Here we go. Not at all. It's not time to week, Ben. Yeah, it's all right. I, I was getting over a nasty cold like everybody else. I find it amazing that we have a very, you know, everyone's kind of located differently throughout the Discord uh, group and, and the network. And we all seem to be getting the same damn sickness. Uh <laughs> 
Yeah. So, so that was annoying, but I am feeling better now, which is great. Uh, and when I was sick, I watched one of my favorite old movies that I hadn't seen in a long time, which was Snatch. And I don't know if you all have seen it or not, but it is, great movie. Uh, it's a Guy Ritchie film. It has a lot of fun characters, a good rewatchability. <laughs> And uh, I love the fun music and diving back into that. I haven't seen it in a while. It was really big when I was in college. Uh, so, so that was like a fun comfort zone movie uh, to watch. And then because I had so much free time away from work, I finally finished my second playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3. And I am sick of being down by the river. I'm over it. I'm done. We're good. I beat it twice. I had a lot of fun. Uh, now I'm moving on. Um, the, the, the other two games that I played were Sifu and Helldivers 2. Um, Sifu was a lot of fun. I, I really like the concept of it. Good. Uh, when you come back to life and, and you age, you know, as you die and come back, which is kind of neat. However, I, I just suck at this game, like just straight up. Like I can't, my timing for the parries is awful. Uh, I have a real hard time on analog sticks doing a down up motion for a move. Like if I'm playing Guile, for example, with an analog stick, I lose all the time because uh, I just have a hard time pulling that off. I, I'm always crooked. I'm either going left or right instead of just straight up and down. Um, but I'll show you on that. They, they released new normal. ones. I, I just whatever the normal difficulty was because I probably you could can... kick it down and, and play it and that'll be fine. Um, but so, yeah, I just just I was just getting my ass kicked a lot there. Uh, and and I still may go back to it. Uh, but from what I did play, it was very entertaining and I definitely get the appeal of it. I get that. Like when I, I remember when I like popped in Sifu on my Switch, I remember playing it and just absolutely sucking at it. Like that game is hard. Even like on the easiest get difficulty, it is hard. I, well, I'm glad like, to know that I'm not alone. <laughs> I played it on easy and I still, yeah. still yeah. struggle. Yeah, but and um yeah. You know, it's kind of sad too when you're like in this one room and you go from like age 30 to 68 or whatever, and I'm just like, oh, this just hurts my soul. <laughs> Hey, uh, um, Devin, go fuck yourself. Sifu is hard. Uh, and then, of course, uh, like everybody else, I'm joining the fight for democracy and joining Helldivers 2. Uh, and this is going to be one of my pet peeves throughout this episode is like, why the fuck are these games coming out with so many goddamn bugs? Uh, I, I was trying to connect. Well, Helldivers has a lot of bugs. Man, no, not the bugs that's you're whole, thinking of. That's though. the whole point of the game. Very good, bugs. but it's not the bugs you're thinking of here. I'm not here. Uh, and, the bugs, and, man. I, I was trying to connect with my uh, Friday night movie game group, and they're a bunch of PC bros, and it, it we could not connect. I could not accept a friend request. We had to do some stupid workaround where we try to land on the same planet for the same mission, and then we can get into a ship and play together moving forward. So I don't understand why you have this game that's like, oh, craft platform, PC, PS5, super cool. And then it doesn't work and it still doesn't work and it's been out for a while. Um, but despite that connection issue that I'm enjoying the game, it's very simple. After about an hour or two, I kind of get bored of it. Um, so I do think this is going to be a good game to play with like the movie night group or maybe some folks on the discord every once in a while. Um, but, but I don't see myself putting in long hours like I would any other game. Like it, it seems like a game that you can kind of just have there when you're not sure what you really want to play. You'll just play some hell divers for a little bit. Yeah, seems like a cool game. I'll get to it when I get to it. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. And by the time you get to it, it might even be better because they just added more content. And like, I heard mechs are coming or something like that. So, hopefully, um, coming soon. Yeah, yeah. But, but, and, and I, I, those Terminators are tough. Uh, the, I much enjoy killing bugs for right now. But, um, you know, I also haven't had an opportunity to play too much multiplayer. The majority of my experience with it has been solo. Honestly, that might be the better option, Yarden, because, like, as Donnie said, I did not understand a word Delvin Jr. said while Snurts was <laughs> anecdoting. Oh, I didn't even hear him either. Oh. He's there. Delvin, mm -hmm. there. Did I mute? Hello? Yes, you probably did. Hello? Okay. Hello? Yeah, you yep. muted yourself. All right. Both right. Yeah, so those are the three games that I've been playing. Uh, Delvin, um, are you still hating Final Fantasy? Uh, yes, that's so weird. I thought you'd like that game. Uh, I do. It's just this so slow pace at the beginning. Like I guess after the prologue, like Ugh. okay. I don't know so, what happened. So like Didn't seven feel was like <laughs> no nah, seven was was the opposite of that. Maybe it's because seven was um you know I knew the story of seven and this is kind of the same story, but it's like it's like a lull. Like you got to go find the 
chocobos. I'm teaching them how to how to ride the chocobos. I'm like I don't do this shit. Can I this just is, play stuff? <laughs> this is like this is the thing that everyone forget about Final Fantasy VII. Is the middle part of the game is exactly like Rebirth is. It's just a slow like you you gotta you gotta take it slow area, and people forget that when talking about seven. Because all they want to talk about is what happened in the original, which, no, I'm not going to say, um, even though, again, 27-year-old game at this point. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, um, everybody always forgets about this part of that game because of what they always talked about. Yeah. Part of the game isn't fun. Um um, maybe it's just me, but I feel like every Square game has like at least some sort of slow part on it. Like, um, that is a lie. I remember For, I felt uh, like that, that is a lie. Sleeping Ooh. Dog says hello. There are no slow parts in that game. That game is fantastic. I, I never played it. I can't play. But I feel like, or at least the JRPGs. Like, I feel like, um, like I feel like most of Final Fantasy do have like a very slow part in it. I remember Kingdom Hearts Three had a tire like a very slow part. Like yeah, it's called the whole game. The game. <laughs> I Game Hearts 2 in particular, I remember like the beginning of that game is really slow. Like the first two hours of that game is really slow. Then you get like like the rest of the game, which is just perfection. But and like even now, like I'm playing a bit of yeah. Chrono Trigger. Um yeah. Like the beginning of that game is a little bit sl- slower, pay- like a little bit more slower paced. And you know, but I know I've seen more from the game. Like I know, like it will pick up eventually. You no, know, I feel like that's with most Square games. Yeah, I think um, I think it'll pick up eventually. I just don't know if I want to stick around that long. Like I'm having fun playing other shit. So I'm like, oh, I don't know. What, what are you doing. What are you playing? What are you playing? Playing Banishers. Now I'm playing. Mortal oh, Kombat he's back. 1. Yeah, the game they said I wouldn't go back to. I went right back to. Surprise, surprise. There you go. Defeating expectations left and right. That game Delving is really cards. impressive for like a double A game. Yeah, it's really, it's really fun. I'm still enjoying my time with it. Um, I think I'm going to go the long route with the game. Because they said um, that I was reading about it and trying to figure out what's the, like, the actual complete ending. And they say that's the ending you probably want to shoot for. So I say I might want to do that. I'm enjoying my time with that. I'm also playing Mortal Kombat 1 as Peacemaker, of course. Nice. A blast. He's so fun to play with. You should just call him his real name, Naked John Cena. Hey. He has, he has clothes on, Haley. He had a... He does, he had, but he didn't he have the Oscars. Patch the back and a patch in the front. Yeah, yeah he even he, at the Oscars. And, and just, I know he did, but the whole point of that was, for those who don't know, that was in solidarity with the Costume Designers Union. Because they're uh, bargaining right now. John Cena's neckness? Yes. It was, I, I also I, like I, how he had to crap I thought it was because he was joining the ball, as they said. He was well, he was doing his, uh, what they said he was doing his... Oh, his initiation? His initiation. <laughs> <Wow>. ritual. <laughs> God, that's so stupid. Yeah, people are stupid. Put, put naked Cena in the game. Yes, Donnie. Yeah, why not? I'm yes. quite sure that'll make a lot of people help. It's just go naked hard. Mortal Kombat across the board. Spe- speaking of John Cena, does anybody know what his favorite guilty pleasure movie is? Oh God, I don't want to hear this. What is it? Behind the Green Door, nineteen seventy-two. Oh, I know which. Uh, I have no idea. I heard him talk about that. Don't look it up, Dad. <laughs> hey, Delvin Junior. Look it up, but make sure she- absolutely safely. not, boy. <laughs> Delvin, what you playing? All right, I, 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 just, uh, I won't go through one of it, but um, like I mentioned earlier, I played a bit of Chrono Trigger. I played, I played a bit of um, Penny's Big Breakaway. Just playing a bit more of it. Uh, I jumped back into Pizza Tower because there was a new update, and I realized that my game save did not properly save, so I had to. <laughs> I had to... Jeez. Uh, Haley got broken. Yeah, it, it was bound to happen. Yeah, uh, there was a new update with the noise, but my uh, save didn't like completely save over. So I had to like, as a, not start from scratch, but essentially just have to like rebeat the game. Like I'm at the very end, so I have to rebeat the game so I can play as the little, the little noise. If you know what that, what, like, essentially it's like the noid, but like 
copyright not copyrighted. I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, <laughs> so it's funny. It's um, funny because uh, Elvin Jr. has the same mic as me. So go ahead, um, finish, Elvin. I'll, um, I'm going a little more more deeper into like the games I played. I played. Um, I got back into like Persona Three Reload. Uh, I've been wanting to get back into it for a bit now, but I just wanted to finish like another game that I will talk about in a minute. Um, and like I am absolutely adore, I adore this game so much. Like, um, pers- like Persona Five was already a very impressive looking, oppressive looking game, but like Three Reload just looks like next level for an Atlas game. Like, it looks beautiful. Like, I remember my dad talked to, t- talked about like a couple of years ago, like how anime games can only look good to a certain point. And that's a statement for a while I did agree with, but like three reload just blows that statement out of the water. Like it looks this game looks next gen. Like it's gorgeous. And not only that, I love the fact that their combat the combat has been improved so much since like three. Because like three, you could not control any of your party members. And a lot of Ooh. people like that choice, and a lot of people didn't hold, like hold that on. choice. I didn't. Delvin Jr. I, yeah, Haley. Can you do me huh? a favor? You see where the mute button is? I'm not telling you to mute yourself. Click the up arrow, please. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a- it, do, does it say Yeti as your selected microphone? Because yes, Chad is it asking. Yeti, so uh, yes, it does say that. Okay. Keep talking. Uh, he could. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry about my phone, everyone. Sorry, yeah, it's okay. We'll, we'll get we'll it's, get through it, this. It, you we'll know. get through it. We're just trying to help you out, buddy. I do think it's adorable that I also have a Yeti. So is this it. like a Yeti pod? Like, are we should we get a sponsorship? <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking, uh, boy. Yeah, hit, yes. hit us up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but. But yeah, like reload, like it feels like a next gen. It feels like a next gen Persona title. But um, I will say there's something that does bother me a bit about the game. Uh, a slight, slight spoiler for like the beginning. What's up with it now? No, no you're fine. Good. I'm going. laughing at Yarden. You sound good, bud. Keep going. <laughs> you, you know this. Haley gets distracted by the chat. It, yes. it's, it happens. So, oh, okay, so okay, you're okay, good, okay. buddy. Keep That's going. You're, you're good. Keep going. All right. Um, but I was saying, like, um, one thing I don't like about Reload, um, a slight spoilers for the beginning of the game. Um, like this is like very beginning. Like the opening intro is so much worse. Like I'm not gonna go too into it, but like the intro for the game, I think is like a lot less effective than the, compared to the original. Because I think the original the original intro is like very effective because you like you don't know any of these characters you don't know, and like when Yukari is pointing the gun to her head, head she's not saying anything, and you know you're kind of like wondering like what's going on, what what is she doing? For some reason, this in the new like in the remake they added dialogue to her, to her like to the intro, and I don't like that at all. I think it it just kind of ruins like the the suspension to me. Uh, this is a very minor thing, um, but I'm docking at least five points for this game. Um, but uh, yeah, I love, I love, I love it so far. Uh, docking think, five points out of what? Do you I have like a right. scale that you usually use for reviewing games, or five points out of five? No. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah, zero out of ten. Intro sucks. Zero out of ten. The intro is tor- horrible now. I hate, uh, but. This game, like I said, this game's like incredible. I don't know if it'll be my game of the year. Um, I think I, I it's like right now it's between this game and like Penny's Big Breakaway. I don't know which one I prefer yet. I'm gonna go okay, deeper into stop. Persona Three. What is out, Penny's but, Big but, Breakaway? Yeah, please explain the Penny's Big Breakaway because all those games you said, they no one on this show knows any of those fucking games. They don't know Pizza I, Tower. I recognize Chrono Trigger. I recognize Pizza Tower only because Delvin <laughs> Jr. has talked to me about Pizza Tower before. I used to go to Pizza Tower after uh, baseball games. Br- it was great. 
Um, Penny's Big Breakaway is a 3D platform made by the same guys who made um, Sonic Mania. Um, it is is peak. I love it. Um, the it got uh, it got revealed back in the Nintendo Partner <laughs> Direct. Um, I, I absolutely adore this game. Uh, it's so colorful. It's so much fun. Like the like I love momentum based platforming in like any game. Like it's essentially momentum based platforming is essentially like Sonic. Um, and Yes, yes, Daddy. I, I, I use Peak. Oh, I don't. My fault. Um, but yeah. you know, uh, I love, I, lo- I love the game. Uh, again, I don't know which one I would prefer. After I beat Three Reload, I'm just gonna have to go deeper into it to figure out. But I also played um because it's Peak. Finished last week. Um, Prince of Persia. <laughs> what is it? Keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Haley's been a rabble rouser. <laughs> so you uh, you completed Final Final Fantasy or no? Sorry, uh, Prince of Persia. How was that? Prince, yeah, I finished Prince of Persia uh, last week. Um, and oh my god! Now, funny enough, the reason why I played played this game is because of PSVG. I was listening to PSVG. I heard Donnie and you listen to that Deb crap ass yes show and. What? What you said, Dad? You listen to that shitty show? <laughs> do something You're on that said show. That's how I know the shit. You're on. <laughs> yeah. That... <laughs> Come on. We all know that the Delvin family gets around every Wednesday night around the campfire to listen to Dad uh, on his podcast. No, they hate me. All <laughs> I hate you, Dad. I love you. Oh, yeah. Aww. Aww. Okay. There <laughs> we'll go. So, so what did you think of Prince of Persia, son? I loved it. Like, I really loved it. Like, I, I, this game was so good to me. I, I went on Steam and just bought all the Prince of Persia games in like the little bundle they had. I think it was like why 10, 20 oh. bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where did you this money from? from? I went and bought all these games because I liked this one. Why? <laughs> well, also, I never played any of them before. This is my first one. It's one of those few franchises that are completely different from era to era, too. So you, you may enjoy the ride, but just keep in mind that it's not going to be the same kind of play that you had with this recent experience. It's going to be a little bit different, That's uh, cool. especially when you go. Especially when you go back to like the Atari days and it's just like a stick figure with a turban on and he's going through some prison or something like that. That is correct. <laughs> the joke that never ends. Donnie, I am a good man. I would never steal from my father. I am a good man. Believe me, Donnie. I feel like we're just going to have somebody um, come in and just read like- the chat as we're going. And it's because like no one's gonna get what the hell they're talking about. This is why you need to join live, folks. You get a different experience when you're on the PlayStation experience if we're live. Yes. Yeah. You know, I just thought this is gonna um, be but... interesting if my boss is watching. <laughs> what? Hi, Haley's boss. Hi, Haley's boss. That's what. Uh, uh, so, so, uh, what, what Prince of Persia game are you gonna try first from the bundle? That's that a good got? question. Uh. Uh, before before I get into that, um, let me just say like, play Lost, Lost Crown is genuinely like I don't play that many Ubisoft games. I don't, I'm not that big of a fan of Ubisoft. This was a game that I genuinely fell in love with. I love this game. It is one of the best Metroidvanias of all time. In all time? Opinion, like I have to say, I, I <laughs> what up? It's what up? All time? Uh, like <laughs> yes. I actually really like this game. The only, the only thing that I think holds this back from like my number one spot because like it's between like Hollow Knight and like Metroid Fusion for me. Like the only one that's like holding me. Holding it's back been out for like three weeks. It's like I think this will. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny. He said peak and the internet dropped. He yeah. said yeah. peak again and the internet dropped. <laughs> now, now w- would you put a qualifier on it? It's like it's the best Metrovania I played this month. You know, <laughs> all time. That's a that's a high that's a high order. You know, you, you know what? 
you may be right. You may be right. You, know you may be right on that. I'll put it like it's the best Metrovania I played so far this year because I played two Metrovanias. The other one I'm not finished with. I barely started, but um, like I really love this game. Uh, I I talk I'll, I'll, I talk about it more on um, another thing. Uh, but yeah, I love this game. Uh, as for which one I'm gonna play first. Probably Sands of Time because I know a lot of people are afraid yeah. that game. Yeah, uh, good. We'll say this. We'll, we'll say this. Uh, and this is why I mentioned I bought them all. Don't don't buy Prince of Persia on Steam because, or at least if you have a Steam Deck, don't buy it on Steam. Uh, that's mainly because I found out that none of them support controller. You don't support controller. <laughs> that's a support controller for some weird really. That's so uh, uh, I'm not familiar with I the Steam Deck. Does that mean you have to just play with like the joystick that's built into it? You can't like dock it and use it or connect a USB port or something like that. Steam Deck. So Steam Deck uh, allows you can... like you to like it, it. It it is essentially its own controller. But what Delvin okay. Junior is the game itself on PC does not support controller. Like for example, when Mass Effect. Oh Games yeah, that happens. That out ha- on yeah. Steam originally, it does not. It did not support controller. It Correct. does now through Legendary Edition, but the original version still does not support. Yeah, I've run into that actually with Mass Effect because I wanted to play the multiplayer without an Xbox Live connection. I also ran into that with the um, Star Wars Commando that I thought I could play on like a 360 controller, but then it was mouse and keyboard. And I uh, am not good. Devin, I know, uh, get better. I understand. But I am not good with a mouse and keyboard, so that was kind of frustrating. So uh, now I get you. Um, um, yeah. I'm probably gonna buy. I'm not now, of course, but like a little later down the run. I want to buy like the PS3 collection they have for the game, uh, mainly for those sweet, sweet trophies. But also because I don't feel like emulating the game. I don't feel like putting the effort in emulating it. Stop! Uh, Stop! Speaking of trophies, you should probably tell people that you sent me a platinum earlier today. Yes. Yes, I will. Uh. Uh, I think that's all everything I played outside of this setting. Uh, but I do also want to mention, like, I've also been dabbling into collecting CDs. Um, which, you know, what? I just want to mention. I don't think I mentioned. Yeah, What's a, a CD? CD? What year is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's collecting uh, CDs. I, now. I really like. Okay. Yeah. Uh. I've been collecting video games for a bit now, and I, I want to start, like, collecting more me- of media I like. So, originally, it started with, like, I started collecting, like, Igor from Kutai Creator. Then I bought another CD, then I bought another, and I'll have, like, ten of them. <laughs> and All right. with one coming, um, hopefully tomorrow, of Louis Vert's Internal Take, which I did not know they made it. They don't CD know who that I is. Bought it. What? I... I don't know that. <laughs> Delvin Jr., I didn't understand a word of that. Yeah, he said he bought Little Uzi <laughs> Vert's CD, which I guarantee no one Ho- on the podcast knows who that is. Hoops! Hoops! No. This is like they, last they night are, when I texted my trapped. coworker that the ship's talking, <laughs> and I told him I was in a Toba code. He goes, the fuck is that? Is that where they summon the Ender Dragon? I don't even know what that is either. These are so many things going on in my head. I should check yeah. behind me in case I missed it. A Tobico is a suburb of Toronto. And uh, I tested my coworker. I tested my coworker that, and he goes, "The fuck is that? Where they summon the Ender Dragon?" Yeah, I I, those words are. Anyway, Delvin Jr. Yeah. knows what the Ender Dragon um, is. Louis, Louis, yeah, I know. I know. Um, Louis Vuitton is like a trap. He's like a trap. They're like a trap artist, like who's in the mainstream right now. Uh, uh, okay. One of my personal comfort artists, and I, I'm really happy to find the. Get the, I'm excited to get this CD, and the, the other one I bought recently is the Demon Days by Gorilla, Gorillas, which is one of my favorite albums. So, Gorillas, yeah, Gorillas are uh, good. I know that reference. Yeah, I was actually at Sherwin Gardens last <laughs> night, John. I was at Sherwin Gardens in Etobicoke. That sounds like a place where you see like a Robin Hood at. It's a, <laughs> it's a three, it's a, it's a fucking sports check that like had three fucking floors. Oh, I know that crack smoking mayor as Rob Ford, right? Yeah, yeah he's fucking dead. Yeah, I know. Yeah, too much crack. Don't do crack, kids. Well, 
Don't hey, die from it. Hey, you know what? Die. He died, and now we've <laughs> yeah. got his crack smoking brother as as the premier of Ontario. Hey, the crack pipe doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, life, you're right. Demon Days is a great album. There you go. Am, what what are these Steve words? You're Why am I, Steve I have no oh. idea. <laughs> Oh, oh, from Captain America. Never mind. I get it. I, I was thinking Aaron Rodgers. Completely different. Sir, Absolutely. What? I am. Sir, I, 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 I lost your so mind. I, so <laughs> so I was so confused for him. Hey, I'm, I'm so on. sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, oh. Hold on. How do we get? How do we get? Snurts is now Steve Rogers, and he goes Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Don't ever compare. I, that was a brain fart. The legendary. Epic, yeah. Steve epic, Rogers epic to scale. fucking Aaron Rogers. Yeah, no, I know. I, I got my Rogers mixed up, man. It happens, all right? All right nope. Look, look, Absolutely I, not. If so I wake up tomorrow with America's ass, this, I will be happy. Thank you, Tara. Absolutely. This is, I will this is, Del- this is Delvin's of this, podcast. this is Delvin's Winter Soldier moment when like they realize, oh, we've got infiltrators. Yeah, no. Just that not. was yeah. I will oh I will God. say this. Like sir, no, sir, was, all you need so is sunglasses. Bad. All you need is sunglasses and you have like, he the did whole it again! Steve Rogers disguise. <laughs> <laughs> he did it again. He, he did us through this dad slogan again. Uh, that's so good. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Uh, this like, little fuck. Donny Reese says, "Make sure you buy." Donny Reese says, "Make sure you buy Hi-Fi Rush for your dad, Elvis Junior." I do own Hi-Fi Rush on Steam. I will say that. No, no. no. <laughs> we don't do that here. Um, but. Um, the the final game I played and the final game I platinum. We're uh, still going. No, platinum. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> I was not gonna mention this, but Haley mentioned it, so I might as well. <laughs> so he says the person took your money. Now your bars. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh. So. Shred- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Um, I I love the game. I adore it. It's one of my favorite licensed games. I am sure of that. I own it physically. I love the game. Don't go for the platinum, dear God. Um, I think like a lot. I think like a lot of like the trophies for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge um, were pretty simple for the most part. Like a lot of them were pretty straightforward. But like those final few trophies are like really grindy. Like. Uh, there was one that you have to max out at, like every single character there except the DLC ones, thank God. And the the other one that I had to do was um beat the arcade mode on the hardest difficulty, which my first run I failed miserably, and the second run, thankfully, I managed to get into like another ma- a match uh, because this game has online and uh. I missed. Hold on, Devil Jr. Like hold hold uh, on, Devil Jr. Uh, Tara, the answer is no, because he frequently gets grounded for it. Oh, Haley calling him out. Yes. She snitched on you, Devil. Damn. Tar- snitch, Tara snitch, says snitch. Delvin does Does your son do, do his homework? Uh, the answer is sometimes. But, <laughs> um, you see, I'm really sad, so I, I just don't feel like doing my homework often, you know? My father understands. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Me calling him out is funny. Him doxing <laughs> himself is even funnier. Yeah. There's consequences. Repeat, repeat that, Haley. Repeat that, Haley. I didn't hear it. I, uh, I, said, I said, me calling you out is funny because I realize when you don't message me yeah, for weeks yeah, yeah, that you're grounded. And then. Uh, <laughs> you just outed yourself. Yeah. Me can uh, get the responsible for liability. <laughs> you're saying it. You're in trouble. Yeah. That's how that works. I don't do it anymore. Like I, I'm, I'm I don't good, do, it I don't do it anymore. Oh. I, I off the stuff for good. I <laughs> the stuff for good. Like, I mean I mean avoid doing my homework by what I said. Uh, avoid, avoid do my home. I do my homework now. That's the point. Back yeah. back to Ninja Turtles. Uh, um, I put myself on the spot here. Yes, you uh, did. Turtle. Uh, the final trophy I had to do was um, the, uh, who needs a doc? Which is the trophy description for that is the beat Super Shredder, the final boss, um, without taking a single hit. 
Now, there's two phases to this fight. One is against Krang, and the other is against Super Shredder. Uh, which I will say, like, speaking of Shredder, uh, the previous um, fight with Shredder, which which was, like, the previous level, plays a Wu-Tang song, and that song is good. You should go listen to it. It's called We Ain't Came to Lose. <laughs> it's a great song. You should go listen to it. Anyways, uh, Wu-Tang's great. so Super Shredder. Um, and it's for the kids. Yes, Wu-Tang yes. is for the kids. Um, yeah, um, Yarden, Yarden says, so happy Delvin lets TMNT live the other week so t- DJR, which I'm assuming is Delvin Jr., can enjoy it. Uh, I don't know what it means by other week, uh, but yeah, my, I mainly learned t- TMNT from my father. And when the reboot show, which is at the time 2012, uh, came out, uh, we were both watching it. It was, it was a way for us to bond, essentially. There you go. Uh, but back to main topic. Back to the main topic. Um, that trophy was genuinely like one of the hardest trophies I had to do because oh my god, Super Shredder is so annoying to fight. Because like yeah, he's pretty cheap. There was a lot of like he has like a lot. Of, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Essentially, you just have to pre- you just have to predict where he's going. Essentially, you. Ha- and some people can get it done like like an hour. Or some people can get it done in a day. I had I finished this this morning. <clears throat> I finished this goddamn trophy this morning. This is like this it was so annoying. And the thing is, it should have been like a little more easier because like <laughs> after that, De- Devin says after that, seafood should be a breeze. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe I become the greatest gamer of all time after this because like. Somehow, <laughs> somehow, I struggled with this. Yeah, kind of like yeah. No, I like, I, I played I, I played Shredder's moves. Revenge a lot, and the the final like Kang boss is easy when he's all big and everything like that. I had no problem, but the the Shredders when he gets all super and oof, yeah, big painted butt, big painted. You got to beat that without getting hit too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's uh, I'm Snurts ain't doing that. Also, let me point out. I realized this trophy was difficult because the video he sent me of him getting it is 30 seconds of him yelling, I did it! <laughs> Fantastic. Sound about right. Did yeah, you get that much. big, uh, Delvin I... Jr., did you get that big <laughs> adrenaline rush when you completed it? You're like, yes, finally! Yeah. Yeah. I, it's a, it's kind of the main reason why I like doing hard buttons. Haley, like Haley's always teasing me like, hey, why? Well, if you don't enjoy it, why do you not like doing it? Because I love that like rush that I get when I beat a hard game. That's why. You're really okay, I'm not stop until you do it. <laughs> yes, no. I'm a complainer. That's what I do. I'm a complainer. <laughs> but, That's what yeah, I do. But that, All right. Yeah. See, Tar 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 gets what I get. Dara gets what I mean. Like that also that that's awesome when you finally beat a hard boss. That she gets what I mean. Um, Not but, I. Yeah, I I love this game. I'm happy I got the platinum again. Um and what I'm probably gonna do, uh I'm probably gonna if I'm gonna play the game again, I'm probably gonna finally play the DLC because I love Karai, I love Usagi. Um and I'm really excited to like jump into that DLC when I get the chance because God knows I'm not doing this. I'm not playing this game for a bit. Um, um, y- Yusagi so is a lot of fun to play as. I, I I picked up the DLC I and I got him the max level real quick. The bunny samurai motif. I haven't followed Ninja Turtles too closely as far as comics or shows, but I, I really enjoyed having somebody that I never knew existed before and yes. had such a fun play style. It feels Yusagi completely Yusagi different awesome. than the rest of the Turtles or Casey Jones or April. It felt like a very unique character. So I think Delvin Jr., when you do go into the DLC, that you'll enjoy it. Along with the new multiplayer mode where they like randomize encounters and you can pick a character and go through that. It's, mm. a, it's a lot of fun and adds a, adds some replayability to, to the game. Mm. I have played a bit as Karai for like the arcade ball trophy because I like Karai and she's really fun. She's also really broken. Like she is very strong. Yes. Um, but yeah, when I eventually get get back into the game, I will um, you know, play a bit more of the DLC. Uh, but, and finally, finally, uh, I played a bit of Ratchet and Clank because I'm going to make that my next Platinum because, God, I need an easy Platinum. Uh, I had Platinum <laughs> Sly Cooper, like, a couple of months ago. So I wanted to do the, the other, like, the other, like, big PlayStation release of that time. And then next, I will do Jack and Daxter after Ratchet. 
And yeah, that's okay. pretty much all I've been playing. Uh, my fa- uh, I talk so much, my father has left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that sound like a country song? I was talking so much, my daddy left. <laughs> uh, okay, so actually, I have to ask, Nerds, have you, uh, have you, since we're waiting for Delvin to come yeah, back, yeah, yeah. Uh, have you watched The Ones Who Live yet? No, I have not watched The Ones Who Live. Oh, so good. It's so good. Yeah. My boy Rick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I gave it five minutes oh, and then I'm like, I don't want to watch Walking Dead anymore. I- I'm just over it. I don't care. You know, he's got he, okay. Like hold on, actually, now that he's back, because I know he's probably not going to tell his his story because you know we're almost an hour in and he usually is like, Now nah, we're too in. I have to ask, <laughs> have you watched it yet? Have you watched The Ones Who Live? No, damn, there you go, quick and done. All right, let's get to the news. Um, I feel like, I feel like starts though, <laughs> yeah, I'm just over The Walking Dead. It, it's okay, I'm glad that other people are enjoying it and it still has legs, but I. I fell off that wagon a long time ago. I'm gonna watch it. Um, I'm in the same. Probably you never watched The Walking Dead, boy. <laughs> I, I, I know I'm in the same boat, but with Star Wars. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's not get that can of worms going. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, you're yeah, gonna yeah, watch yeah, it one. Yeah, 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 I got you. I'm gonna <laughs> watch uh, probably tomorrow. Okay. Some, there's, I've been so busy with four, so many different things, but there's four episodes out right now. There's two left, so. I ended up buying the season on Voodoo. I'm just gonna watch it like that. Who do you voodoo? Fair enough. Who do you voodoo? Who do you voodoo? <laughs> Who do you voodoo? Speaking of, uh, speaking of, they just put out a trailer, a teaser trailer for the second DLC. So, oh, cool. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. Great. So hard. All right. Let's more get- Dragon Ball. Less Rock- Walking Dead. Said Donnie. Hey, Agreed. hey, 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 we'll get there. It's our topic of show. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's get to some of these news stories. All right, we got the first one up. We got PlayStation Plus catalog for March. The, the titles is hitting PlayStation Plus services. NBA 2K24, the Kobe Bryant edition, which is great. Marvel Midnight Suns, Resident Evil 3, Lego DC Super Villains, Mystic Pillars, Remastered, Blood Bowl 3, which I feel like has been on there before, Super Natonia RPG, and Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. The non essentials, of course, as Dev like to say it. Kakarot's an awesome game. You definitely should play so is, that. So is Midnight Suns. Highly recommend it. It's very Midnight good. Suns, great. NBA 2K24. Uh, I, I have played it. Any other ones y'all want to pick off this list? No, nah, I just uh, thought it was. I, I, I have played. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. You have played. Yeah, I, I thought it was a pretty decent offering of games. Um, I'm not a plus subscriber myself, but I, I looked at that and I was like, you know what? There's if I was, there's definitely some things I'd be checking out. Yeah, solid yeah. lineup. It's a, it's a good lineup. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of decent stuff. But I, I, I like Marvel Midnight Suns. I played a bit of it on my Steam Deck. It's very fun. I like. Resident Evil 3, I, I'm a little mixed on, but, you know, still follow enough game. For, um, for the low Dragon price of... Is a decent... for, the, for the low price, you have a barrier to entry for Resident Evil 3 Remake. It's fine for Plus, but uh, it as many people have yeah. said, that game probably should have been DLC for Resident Evil 2 because... Um, oh really? As a, you can if you know <laughs> what if you know what you're if you know what you're doing for Resident Evil Three remake, you can beat it in ninety minutes. Oh wow, jeez! Yeah, like for, and Even and just know, for re- um, just for reference, yeah. let me point out as someone who has the platinum trophy, there is an achievement to beat the game in ninety minutes with three saves on the hardest difficulty. Huh. Not okay. doing that. Like even even without like any knowledge, my my friend, um, my friend Athena, uh, she beat the game in like two hours without knowing anything about the, about the game. If she beat it in like two hours, which is to me is insane to think about. Um, but again, it's a good game. It's just a really flawed one. And also, also though, we'll Kaka, say, um, is it? We'll say, like the Carlos redesign for Resident Evil Three Remake, though. Hey. Yeah, I like it. Cool. I, I just don't care about Carlos in general. Um, but how dare yeah, you? Carlos is great. Kakarot. 
I I don't like Carlos that much. She was better. <laughs> um, but uh, and Dragon Ball Z Kakra, this pretty decent um Dragon Ball game. You know, not more than a decent Dragon Ball game. Yeah, it's good. I like. It. Is it better than Xenoverse? <laughs> I, I've only played Xenoverse and no. Dragon Ball Z Fighter Z, so those are my experience with Dragon Ball games. I, I'll it's take not, but you know, I think it, cool. I it's it's on. The, I would say it's like near the same level as Xenoverse, but it's like way worse than like Z Fighters. Z Fighters is like peak Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, I agree. It's it's my favorite experience for that for that franchise. Yeah. All right, let's get to our next story. This is gonna be a fun one because it's what it's the hashtag Dottie was right story. <laughs> Aspire issues apology for atrocious Star Wars Battlefront launch. Yeah. How did you mess it up? <laughs> Easy. Well, let me get to it. Let me read the update. Here we are, then the inevitable apology tour. Aspire has issued an update on the disastrous Star Wars Battlefront Classic Edition launch, which can be purchased at full price on PS5 and PS4 right now. Why the fuck would you do that? At okay. launch, we experienced... <laughs> Go ahead. Delvin Jr.'s mic is now picking up Echo. I know, I'm, st- I'm going to mute and unmute now. Uh, I, I I don't I don't want to pick I don't want to like ruin the podcast. I'm just gonna unmute and unmute. Yeah. I don't hear. It. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's very noticeable when there's like uh, a break in audio. Whoever spoke last will be like audibly quiet coming through Delvin Junior's mic. Okay. So. My fault, everyone. <laughs> All right. So let me go at launch. I'll read that quote. At launch, we experienced critical errors with our network inf- infrastructure. A statement read, the result was incredibly high ping, matchmaking errors, crashes, and servers not appearing in the browser. They add, since launch, we have been working to address these issues to increase network stability and will continue our efforts until the network infrastructure has been stabilized to prevent further outages. Why the fuck do we keep giving them our games? Why the fuck do they keep releasing games that aren't ready to go at launch? It's so so frustrating. Uh, um, Donnie Reese's pieces and also Devin. I don't I don't got a funny name for you. Said they put the bare minimum. I would even put minimum. I would say like they just put this game on emulator. Like this, how how do you how do you mess this up? Like this was such an easy CW. How did you mess this up? Easy. Like, it was such an easy win. What one, one of, of course, my favorite things like, that Donnie course, talked like about this. on a uh, thing we talked about on Shaq yesterday that the the game actual file was like like a couple of gigabytes, <laughs> and the, the actual file they put in the game is like like four times the amount the original file was. So also I. Like- I saw that developer or like that mod it's developer insane. tweeting about it today. They just ripped off his, his entire mod. There it is. Uh, There's the- like how did they mess this up? How did they mess up? This like this was such an easy port. Like not of course like not every like port's easy, but like like this was if you just took like at least a year of development, like you could have like had like a genuinely like really solid like at least a solid port. But you had to rush this. Was this game released at the same time? Was this game like in development at the same time it got announced? <laughs> See, like, here's what Donnie like said. Switch? On PS2, it was 4 gigabytes. On PC, it's 68 gigabytes. And on Switch, it's like 35 gigabytes. That's yeah, what the hell crazy. are they doing? They, and then you don't even have crossplay in there. It, very disappointed. I'm glad I did not pre-order this game. I was, I was looking. I was singing the praises. I was like, "Oh man, I'm going to relive my pandemic days and have good old Star Wars fun and and be Darth Vader and kill everybody, yay!" Yeah. And and like, man, just just shit in the bed on launch. Yeah, not not a good look there. You'd have really relived your pandemic days and just been sad. Yeah, that just, pandemic, just, right? Just, yeah, I meant my game yeah, testing days. Yeah, but that, yeah, it's more like 2020 pandemic and not 20 yeah. uh, 2007. Yeah, like, oh. 
Yeah, crazy. I just can't believe they screwed it up. But, you know, maybe it's one of those things where you get a couple patches and then uh, six months from now, it's one of the free PS games of the month. And and then I'll give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Any thoughts on this, Haley? I knew it was going to happen. Donnie told me. I listened. Uh, I mean, really, it's like Aspire should just stop. Just stop. Just stop. Just go away. Can we replace one of the studios that we miss and actually liked and, and get rid of Aspire? <laughs> Probably yeah. not, but yeah, no, it's uh it's I this is what the second or third time they've done this. Yeah, apparently yeah. it is all the Star Wars game that they supposed to be making. Wasn't it um they're supposed to be a remake of um Kotor? Kotor and that didn't happen. Yep. Yeah. They got pulled off of that. Um I know that like this is not the only show to like do that where it's like, hey man, we're just gonna make it a pain in the ass for you to do anything. Also, weren't there like servers so busted that you can only have like sixty four players on Steam at launch? Right for a sixty four player online experience. So there was only- like one game for everybody. Oh, that had to be the greatest game of Battlefront ever. Right, because it was full. Like it was actually full. Right, just one game. Like everybody, yeah. the whole on all those things, just one group of people playing. They're like, "Yeah, this is it." And I forget who in the Discord shared a picture too, but like the snow was pink. Like, come on, basic. What? Hey, yeah, someone shared a, a screenshot of the game, and the snow, like on the Hoth level, I'm assuming, was just like pink. Like just like not all pink, but like and even just, when you got in the game. Yeah, it started to look like like a Sorry. like a, you you throw some shades of green in there and some wiggly lines and it's like the blurred out porn channels Delvin and I grew up with. Yes. Um, <laughs> but again, if you're just gonna steal, a... <laughs> at least the snow isn't yellow. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Sorry. Very good. If very you're true. if you're just gonna steal someone's <laughs> mod and like not credit them, what's the point of like you doing any port work? Yeah, no kidding. Go ahead, Delvin. Even. <laughs> And even even like if like if we're ignoring like the gigabytes that's in this game, how do you, this is like a PS2 game game. How did it come out this buggy? How did it come out like this buggy? Like there were like people like posting on like Twitter and Reddit, like that of them like teleporting everywhere, where like some people couldn't even get in the match. It's like this was such an easy to, like money maker to make because like there's so many people who are nostalgic for like those old Battlefront game days. This like was such an easy. Like I was excited for this. I I never played Battlefront, but I did play like the reboot that EA made, like the Battlefront Two and Battlefront One back when I was like with my cousins, so my visit my cousins, and it was, I would love to experience like what did like you know my dad's generation experience or Snurf's experience, and I'll never get to experience people. that because this port sucks. <laughs> Uh, I would never say never, but you know it's not going to be this round uh, or anytime soon. Now, uh, Donnie might know this. Does, does this never company have like a, 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 I'll fight you a forever. reputation of fixing things down the line, or they just shit the bed and leave the turd? The answer. I'd rather is, talk about what the Delvin fuck Junior, the dirty sprite is than whatever the hell was just. <laughs> no, okay, what we're not going. We're not doing dirty sprite. <laughs> I had to Google that. I don't. I didn't know what that was. You really had to Google Dirty Sprite? Yeah. Lord have mercy. No. Okay. I. Dirty uh, Sprite too. Hey, my favorite. Hey man, on. I don't know what the fuck a Dirty Sprite is. I never heard of it until it was mentioned. I appreciate that we've been on this show for a goddamn hour, and she decides to to to, 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 to Google Dirty Sprite now. Purple no, giant. no. I go- I googled it when we were talking about it originally, but then Snurks made the comment about leaving the turd in the bed, and I that's why I brought it up because I was like I'd rather talk about that than that. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So according to Donnie, uh, no, they will, update will, things will, pretty say, good. We played it multiple times this week. It's much better than it was on launch day. Well, that's good to hear. All right. Um, I will I will say also mention something that Donnie said in the chat. Um, he said the answer is money, Dylan Jr. They did a they did their job, get in and out, spending the least amount possible. Aspire understands to have increased margins. Do know that. Like it's like I in a business perspective it's smart, but at the same time, in like a longevity perspective, like how is this game gonna work in like a couple of years? Like this work. game won't work in a couple of year, years because this game came out like crap. 
Yeah. They're not, Some people they're not making will. this. They're not or making what? this game to play in a couple of years. They're making this game for people to get the buzz for it now, and that's it. Once to get the buzz out, once people play it for the little time, they they expect people to have short attention spans. They get their money and they're out. That's it. Nine months from now, we'll have the article: server shut down for Star Wars Battlefront. Pretty much, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Such a disappointment, uh, man. Look here. Uh, d- I am not explaining yes. to you people uh, what dirty spider yes, is. Yes, right? yes. <laughs> they are mixing cough. They are mixing. They are mixing cough medicine with fucking Sprite and drinking it for if, some if, fucking if, reason. If y'all want to know Correct. Dirty Sprite is, go listen to the future yep. song. I'm not on here to t- tell you what Dirty Sprite is, all right? <laughs> Actually, now that I think of Just go listen to some, rap, some good trap music. All right. <laughs> well, you know, now that I think of it, Donnie's pretty right, too. I could just play Battlefield Classic. I just got to fire up my 360 and find my copy. I know I have it somewhere. Yeah. You know, I'll be by myself, but you know, that's how I used to I play. Am... So who cares? Yeah. I am not touching Battlefield. All right. All right. Our, our next story is an important one, so let's get to that. Yes. Tommy um, Reese, trap is a trap is a um subgenre of rap. I don't think you'll like that. it. <laughs> no. We're not, we're, not, we're, yeah. not we're not explaining trap music or dirty strike <laughs> people. Yeah, it's it's new wave dubstep. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Not today. Not today, Lord. It's not AI. I swear it's not AI. It's better than AI. Trap has been around for it's a good. long time. It was it was sneaking into the scene when I was on my way out of the drum and bass parties. Oh my. Oh my yes, God. Donnie. Let's, let's get back on topic. Let's get back on topic. Sandstorm. Sandstorm. That's not for, okay. For, not for anyone, for anyone not, not for anyone like literally not uh in the live show, uh Donnie said Darude, and I just that's why I sandstorm. Yeah. Uh-huh. I missed my uh, days of recording. Imagine Chief Keef. Uh, imagine Chief Keef on uh, the Root Sandstorm. Let's get back on topic. Let's get back on topic. I need to get off topic. Let's get back on topic. Who the fuck is Chief Keef? <laughs> I'm not going there. Man, we're getting You're to the next topic. Chief. This fucking wild mess of a podcast we have. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. They just <laughs> <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> how, how how am I, I gonna go to this next topic? topic. Gang, I'm sorry. I know, right? <laughs> it's gonna be such a hard pivot. Okay, okay. Hard pivot. This next one is actually serious. So yeah, that, 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 that helps Haley. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Hard <laughs> pivot. <laughs> Anytime somebody says this hard, hard pivot. pivot. Hard pivot. Here we go. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> 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 how am I gonna get to this next topic? <laughs> just do a record scratch. That's how. Let's just go. Let's yeah. just go. Just do it. Just do it. I wish. I wish. I wish we had a record scratch in here. I, I would actually play it right now. Like, scratch. <laughs> no. <laughs> Talk about the passing of the legend of Akira Toriyama, Dragon Ball creator. Yeah, that's that's the next topic. And y'all, 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 I don't even. I don't even. I don't, I don't, I don't get to it. So. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I'll, I'll some start. Ball, this love Dragon Ball. Speaking nope, Dragon we're not Ball. doing that. <laughs> we're, not, we're not doing that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, damn it, Junior. Let the man speak. <laughs> so, at the beginning of this month, you know, we had a, a passing. A passing with the legendary creator of Dragon Ball, Terry Toriyama. You know, they were, I don't I don't want to discuss his death. You know, it came out how he passed away and stuff like that. But um, for those who don't know, he had like a huge impact on on video games, like whether it was like Chrono Trigger, Dragon Quest, numerous Dragon Ball games. Yeah, what is what's the new one that's coming out that, that's coming out next month? That looks amazing. Sandland, uh, I think it's called. Yes, there's a demo called. out now for Sandland. Yes, yes, that looks great. You know, and, um, I was I am a big Dragon Ball fan. Delvin Jr. is a Dragon Ball fan as well. You know, has a big impact on a lot of people's lives and. I guess right now, since we're here sitting there talking about it, I think we can um, talk about some of our favorite Kira Toyama games, moments, things like that. I guess you go first, Haley. Uh, hi. I barely have any because, let's be real, um, I'm not a Dragon Ball person. However, I did used to watch Dragon Ball. Like, like I'm not I'm not into it like everyone else, right? So, like, I used to watch it all the time after school. Um, so, you know. No, I did not say who. I know who he is, and I know what Dragon Ball is. 
It's just I <laughs> never played any of the Dragon Ball games or anything like that. I just watched the show I, when I, I was young. I will say this. It would have been bad funny if he like, who? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, if Haley would have did that after I gave that and passed this speech, I would have walked off this goddamn podcast. <laughs> Especially after all the, like, I mean, Twitter and Discord revolve, it's been full of tributes to him, which I think was kind of yeah. beautiful. I, I yeah. thought that was yep. really yes. nice. Um, and, yes. and even if you're not like the biggest fan of him, you can still recognize the impact on both the video game, manga, and anime uh, worlds. Yes. Yes. Uh, also, the endless discussion of who could win in a fight, Superman or Goku. And Oh, yeah. The answer is Goku. The answer yeah. is actually <laughs> neither, because they would reconcile that they <laughs> don't need to fight each other and then go have food, because that is how both well, of those characters the, work. Yeah, the answer they, is Superman, because Goku is so, a goddamn idiot. Thank Goku, you. That's, that's correct. Goku <laughs> that is would, correct. Tell, would tell Superman, hey, how do you get stronger? Well, go over there and get as strong as you can. <laughs> then, then we'll fight. Goku would purposely hit him into the sun so he can go max out. And yeah, then... I want to see how strong you can get. Like an idiot. Yeah. yeah. Okay, again, yes, Goku um, would be a fucking idiot. Fuck you! No! You gotta say his goddamn name <laughs> right. It's Green Arrow. <laughs> What's Green Arrow? Uh, Haley Root uh, getting getting uh, uh, riled up again because of Donnie. <laughs> uh, no, uh, anyway. Goku would not tap in and find a way to beat him. If Goku punches Superman into the sun, guess what? No, Thelma Jr. No, yeah. <laughs> sorry, bud. Um, uh, I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry. Would... I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. It, don't don't go Power it. Rangers. Uh, so, so, um, uh, Delvin, how would you? How were you introduced to Dragon Ball? Because for me, it was Toonami, uh, and I remember watching the the DBZ episodes on Toonami when I was a kid growing up. Um, I want to say in the early two thousands, and we were so pissed because the very last episode that they had available to license was Goku literally landing on planet Namek before Ooh. taking on the Ginyu Force, and it was such a goddamn tease because he would always land. And then it would, that's it. And it would just restart to the first episode of the Dragon Ball series until like a year or so later where they finally had the rest of like Frieza, Cell, Boo, and whatnot. Um, so, so how were you introduced to Dragon Ball? Oh, that's easy. When I was a kid, they used to play Dragon Balls, yeah. not Z, on TV yeah, the all the one. time. The first cool. one. Yeah. So I used to watch that. I thought Dragon Ball was okay. I'm like, oh, this is okay. This is fun to watch. But like you know, like you said, they ne- they never showed you the end of Dragon Ball. <laughs> they were like, they were like yeah, stop at awful. a certain point. Like, oh, it was done. And then you know, when I got older, I really got into Dragon Ball Z when I got like in college, because nice. what happened was when I got in college, me and my buddies, there was a comic book shop and an anime shop that was like way down south. So we would leave school and go to the comic book shop, and they had a whole stack of um, animes that were, and this is crazy for people to believe because people know who I am, subbed. They were subbed anime. Okay. And people know I don't really watch sub anime, but what we what I would do, we'd go there every week, and we'd buy just a bunch of anime for like 20 bucks a piece. Like seasons of like whole box sets like the the Cell Saga, the Freezer Saga, all this stuff with like you know the Tree of Might stuff. We just buy copies of that um DVDs, yeah. and we just go home and watch them all day. And you know, they want they buy all the other stuff too. That's a whole other story. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, no, I had the same experience. I still have like I actually busted my. I still have sets of the movies. I don't have like the show because there's so many damn episodes. I don't think I have enough DVD like counter space for that many DVDs. Um, and and uh, I was getting such a Dragon Ball Z fix before I could get to the end on the Toonami run. Um, I would look up music videos and people would edit, you know, they play like corn or something like that and they would throw together uh, different fights. And that's how I saw like a lot of the GT stuff as well as Z and, and Dragon Ball, because people were just doing these creative little things. Big O's um, my favorite anime, by the way. Which one? Big O. Oh, anime. there you go. Cool. Love it. Nice. And uh, I also was a very big fan of DBZ Abridged, which is a fan-made YouTube uh, version of DBZ, which to me is very hilarious and does the series that justice. So it's, um, made, it's made by the same people who do uh, Hels- who did Helsing Abridged. Funny. 
Correct. And uh, but, you know, with the passing, I, I definitely had to go back to the source material, as they say at the beginning of every one of their episodes, like, please support the official release. Uh, and I went back and I watched the Super Broly one, the first one, uh, which was a lot of fun. I had to say this new DBZ Super, like, I, I don't really know what's going on too much, but it looks beautiful. Like, it, it is does. gorgeous. All I know um, is that there's apparently a new form of freaking Super Saiyan because their hair is blue now. Instinct. There's uh, there's instinct. there's Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue, Super Saiyan Ultra Instinct, Super Saiyan Super Size. Um, you know, it, it, they're always going to come out. They're just going to keep coming out with different versions of the same stuff. Um, yes. You know, as much as I like it, there is very repetitive. You know, the new big bad guy who's super strong. They get the. It's the kick. anime they, problem. It's they like, have oh, to train. You beat you know. me. I gotta level up. Yeah, exactly. Like and I'm gonna, scream, I'm gonna scream really, really hard, and there's gonna be something you never heard of before because you know, anime. Um, but but yeah, a lot of fun. And the Fighter Z, as we were talking about earlier, I, I love that video game. I brought it back in, started playing a few few of those. Uh, I love how the arc system it does the you know light, hard, heavy, and then special uh, control system versus like a Street Fighter setup. Um, and it was just very sad that uh, the passing in general. Uh, for those who don't know, I am going to go to my father's funeral this weekend, and he was also born in 1955. So I'm a little like uh, sensitive to people who are dying in their 60s, who are like, it just seems like it's too young. Can we get more people going in at least into their late 70s it. at least? Um, so I was very saddened by his passing, but the outgoing of support and content that I saw from it gave me a little bit of ray of hope that there is some good still out there in the internet. So uh, I'll, I'll start with Delvin. Jared, Delvin, what's your favorite Dragon Ball moment? Uh, I was gonna say like before, like I talked about my favorite Dragon Ball. Moment. Let me just share this real quick. Um, Akira Toriyama, like like his work that definitely like inspired a lot of like stuff for me. Like like I love like I love like the art style of Dragon Ball when I was younger to the point where I like it. it I was trying to like draw like. Like stuff like Goku, like I remember, like even before, like I started watching Dragon Ball, like I remember, like I was obsessed with like the idea of like, oh, there's another form, there's another form, and you know, and not only that, like Akira doing on this work is like in general, like, like it's just had a, such an influence on like not not only myself but like pop culture in general. Like you see, like not only you could see like the influence in like anime, for example, where like every anime has like this like power level scale now and like even like you look at like the big three three in anime um naruto one piece and bleach and like you can all see like little hints of like influence from dragon ball but in that like big three and now that in games like chrono trigger i started playing chrono trigger because you know his passing and i wanted to experience more from his work and like you can see like you could see like the influence in Pro chrono trigger and like a lot of jrpgs geez today like sea of stars recently came out like last year you know and that game was very much expired by chrono trigger and like i remember like this is this is to answer your question like i remember when i was like 12 i was watching like Stry dragon ball while my dad was cutting my hair and i remember like seeing like trunks for the first time like i've never seen like future trunks and like i thought he was the coolest character i thought he was like so so cool and even like and this was this this like answer is kind of corny um but i remember like 2021 i think me and my dad got covid and um yeah, you know, tried to kill me we we had to stay in the same room because huh? <laughs> uh we had to stay in your the dad same just room said something funny don't worry don't worry remember... about it okay 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 um i remember where yeah yeah trunks devin said trunks had that hair and a sword yep that's what that's immediately why i liked him uh, yeah, and, he, and he, so his loud. opening so intro loud. is yeah. kicking Frieza's ass like my, handedly, like not my even. Yeah, by the way, that, he was like, so just, cool. He yeah, was so cool. Yeah, all um, but, here. Um, I remember, I remember, like, <laughs> um, it was my first time watching Super, and for, um, and my, I remember my dad was watching Dragon Ball Z, Super, and like now oh, I've seen most of Super, and I have more of an opinion on it, like, like, um. I don't really like super that much but like besides that um um i remember like sitting there watching super with my dad and you know it was just kind of a nice moment because you know at the time i was really sick 
Yeah. yeah we, nice moment. Like, dying right night, we were both like trying to fall asleep. Which... <laughs> it was kind of like nice to just sit there and watch like Super with my dad. I think it, I don't remember what's her name, but I think it was like the fight between like Goku and like the other Saiyan, like the girl Saiyan. I don't remember her name. Oh, uh, Cali- Cauliflower like, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, cool. Um, what's and, what's your favorite moment you know, though? It like, is it the trunks nice. like your dad or or Yeah, it was trunks, obviously. It's trunks it's trunks okay. introduction. The first there's the second fight with like Goku and Vegeta when Goku finally comes back to life. Finally comes back to life life and you know they're having the fight fight between like him and Vegeta. It I uh I remember like the relationship between like um Piccolo and Gohan, you know, like the there's a lot of moments of Dragon Ball that I love. Yeah. Nice. I, I don't. I, I remember this more because of the video game. Um, but I and I'm thinking it's one of the Brawly movies, one of the old school ones. But there's a thing where it's Gohan, Goku, and Gotenks all do a Kamehameha together to finish the big bad of of the episode or the movie. And I always kind of like that. I love seeing the, you know, the dad and the two sons, you know, powering up, doing the thing. And and to me, that was that was really cool. I also love the fight between Piccolo and Android 19. Is it 19 or seven? No, 19. 19 is the guy with the black hair. I think so. Um, yeah. And I remember that one being really fun. And when he does like his hell zone grenade and uh, Piccolo does and stuff like that, I remember that being a, a very fun time. So uh, rest in peace to a goddamn legend yeah facts it is android 17 by the way 17. Um, but, yeah, okay that's here, right 16 down. 17 18 19 is the guy with the trucker hat yeah. <laughs> all right we got one more topic to talk about i guess uh snurts you want to talk about bring up bring us up uh, speed on this topic because this is a very interesting one that i don't know about that much about Actually, I might punt this to Haley because this was her request to talk about it. So, oh, Haley, there we do you, go. request to you, talk about it I, because I, I'm being targeted by these fucking dorks. Oh, you're yeah. Both. So, so Haley, why don't you take the wheel and then uh, we'll comment um, yeah. as best yeah, we can. Ab- absolutely. So, um, <clears throat> sorry, I had to pull up the show notes. Um, okay, so. Okay, so uh, for anyone who doesn't know what the hell's been going on with Sweet Baby uh, Inc., uh, which is basically a nothing burger oh, but dear. we'll uh we'll get into that um so for reference we're linking to an article called sweet baby inc doesn't do what some gamers think it does uh and before i read the excerpt from the article uh sweet baby inc is a consulting company that helps with uh narrative and whatnot in many games uh and it has caused an uproar uh, because it was noticed that there was a Steam curation group, which for anyone who doesn't know what Steam curators are, it's just like a page where you can like recommend or not recommend games. Um, basically being like, oh, if this company works on this game, you shouldn't you shouldn't buy it or whatnot, right? Uh, for whatever reason, these people like lumped onto it afterwards, and it's become a whole thing. Anyways, excerpt from the article reads: Late last month, one of the company's consultants discovered a Steam group dedicated to detecting games that Sweet Baby Inc. has worked on. The purpose? To encourage people to avoid these games because the group has deemed SBI was pushing a quote-unquote woke agenda by working toward greater diversity, equity, and inclusion. The Steam group now has more than 100,000 followers and its own Discord that boasts nearly 2,000 members. But this ire against Sweet Baby Inc. and DEI initiatives in general isn't a isn't new. In October 2023, Kiwi Farms post shares similar sentiments, stating that the company's involvement in Remedy's award-winning 2023 action game, Alan Wake 2, was, quote, possibly one of the biggest scandals in gaming history. And then, a statement from CEO Kim Belair, I believe is how you pronounce that. Sweet Baby is, at its core, a narrative development company. That means anything from script writing to narrative design to narrative direction, to story reviews. One of the things that we do offer is cultural consultations or authenticity consultations. For us, that generally means that we might be asked to look at a story if there's a character in it who is marginalized in a certain way. And the studio wants us to connect them with a consultant who can bring a little bit of authenticity. 
but the perspective is never that we're coming in and injecting diversity. For the most part, it's the reverse. It's that a company has created a character, and they want to make that character more representative and more interesting. Sweet Baby Inc. and other industry leaders suggest that this dogged insistence on believing one company is forcibly injecting diversity into games as a side effect of a widespread misunderstanding of how games are actually made. Until the industry is more willing to openly discuss development pro- the development process, the lack of transparency will continue to be used as a straw man for bad faith arguments. That okay, hold on one second. Hold on, one second. At- hold on, Haley. Hold on one second. Yeah. I want to clarify something. So this company is the, the dumb it down for some of us like me. This company's what, Sweet Baby, right? Sweet Baby Inc., yes. Sweet, Sweet Baby Inc. essentially does, because we talked about something like similar like this last year with for Spoken with mm-hmm. the black girl gamers. They're yep. basically consultants who, like, if there's a character of diverse, a diverse character in the game, they'll speak on, like, is this character accurate to the person that's supposed to be portraying? I'm, I'm assuming that's what they're supposed to do, correct? Yes. Okay. I was on that podcast, too. Okay. So, uh, to finish the quote I was at, until the industry is more willing to openly discuss the development process, the lack of transparency will continue to be used as a straw man for bad faith arguments that characterize DEI as an imp- impo- imposition by nefarious unseen forces rather than an effort to cultivate a more accurate reflection of the world around. Now, before I get in to um, why I'm being targeted, uh, for anyone who's unaware of the controversy around Alan Wake 2 these same people who think that Sweet Baby is destroying the industry uh, are under the impression that uh, Saga Anderson in Alan Wake 2 is only black because of Sweet Baby when uh, even Narity's uh, story director had to come out and be like no that's just how the character was designed like that's who we had in mind and these people were feeling but um yes so uh, the reason we're talking about this, because it's a bit of a bummer, but uh, this is essentially kind of boiled it down into, like, Gamergate, round two, which... Ugh. But I'm being targeted by these fucking dorks. And yes, they're fucking dorks. How are you being targeted by them? How did, how did oh. you... I'm just curious, how did you even get on their radar to be targeted by them? Like this is... Because I defended my friends who work at GameSpot, because I have a couple of those, and I uh, happen to you know, defend them. And so now they have decided to just, you know, go ahead and send me unhinged shit. Like, Snurts has already seen one of the emails I got and posted in the Discord. Yeah, no, it was it was wild. Um, it, absolutely unhinged bullshit. I'm not going to read the email, but I will read the header for you because it's very funny to me. Um, yeah. Here you go. You wokesters ruined my proposal for Half-Life 3 and my original series I have built on it. That's one of the deranged emails I've received from these fucking idiots. Yeah, and I mean, aren't they even... Wokesters is a very creative term. No, I'm so tired of that. (laughs) I'm so tired of the word woke. It's like been used so much, it's lost all meaning. It's such a bad name. Um, yeah, it, you know, they're even complaining well, about everyone's favorite, uh, you know, Eve that everybody, uh, at least the guys seem to drool over, um, you know, and, and they just have this like weird, stupid notion that all video game characters should be some kind of like white about Christian Eve? male. Yeah. They're yeah. Going yeah. too far. Those fuckers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just it, it's this weird mentality where they just project their own insecurities, I guess, about their own people and, ah. and, and expect everybody to conform with like some old outdated notion where instead, like what we need is more diversity. We need more inclusion. We don't need less. I'm, I'm going to be honest. And this is, maybe this is me not knowing, but I now when I kind of look at this type of stuff, I'm like, why do we give these people any attention whatsoever? Why are these people mm-hmm. just like not ignore, just completely ignored and, Thrown into a fucking rocket. Like, why do why do we give a fuck about anything these people say? They are worthless. Their opinions should not matter. They just say shit to be saying shit, and it's annoying that they get so much attention for the stupid shit they do. Like, um, I know, like, I remember this when the Haley brought this up. I, I immediately thought of for, for a spoken thing because people were kind of saying stuff like, um, 
the character from there wasn't um quote unquote black enough. And I'm like, and then the, the black girl gamers came out and spoke up and said, no, we put a lot of input on this character. And that became a thing like, oh, they, we have the conversation about woke characters and things like that. And it's always such a weird thing that people I guess it bothers me a little bit more because you start you're starting to see these things transpire not only in gaming, like in um video games, movies, and in every in almost every aspect of life. It's just su- su- such a weird thing that we get now where people have to be so combative when it comes to any type of thing, whether it's any type of diversity, whether it's in video games, whether it's in movies, whether it's in TV shows. I, yeah. I um talked about it with Delma Jr. I want to say mm-hmm. a month ago, where um, the Marvels, people yeah, were like yeah. giving the Marvels so much shit. Yeah. And and it was like, it was like, whether you liked the movie or you didn't like the movie, that's the thing on there. It was like unnecessarily people were paddling on this movie. And then it comes out on digital. What was last month? It was recent. Uh, yeah. It was very recent. Yeah. And I was telling, telling you, like, look at how the message has changed behind. How people talked about that movie when it was coming out and was like trying to make money and trying to like you know make a profit. Then we don't didn't feel like oh everybody oh, this movie is bad. No one near as bad as what people said it was. And one hundred percent, yeah. It's, it's just a weird thing where people just kind of go yeah. up their ways to make something sound like it's shit because there's a woman protagonist or a black protagonist. It's just such a corny thing to do. Yeah, but I should also point out Dev yeah. being like surprised anyone in that group isn't just flagged well so that's the unfortunate thing is uh when it was brought to the group's attention like to uh, sweet baby's attention that this group exists one of the employees was like hey uh maybe this shouldn't be allowed to be a curation page because it goes against steam's terms of service and of course these idiots lumped onto that and that's how it got a following and so now anytime anyone like you know criticizes these fucking dorks um so their first response is, well, no, a sweet baby employee tried to get a guy to lose a Steam account. Yeah, fuck him. He should lose a Steam account. You're a fucking idiot. You literally, like, violated the terms of service. Yeah, it, it just fucking feels idiot. like when we pay these people any attention, it gets more traction. It when, does, unfortunately. And it, and it, it, it comes to a point where you're like, yo, just ignore these assholes and let them talk to a avoid to themselves because it's just too much it's, it's i i i've always when it comes to video games it's like no let's play video games let's enjoy the, the art form that we love why do we have to make everything about what we want and what what we need and whether it's quote unquote woke or not just shut the fuck up and play video games yeah like, i like yeah. that slogan uh i also th- i'm of two minds Devin, because i agree with you like why are we giving light to these assholes who should be in the shadows but at the same time i feel like we need to call out their nonsense and say like you know this isn't right this isn't normal this is a minority they may be a vocal active minority yeah. um but but they exist so like you know but but it, i i don't have an answer for that at all um because you know, if we if we don't talk about it, I feel like they're getting away with it. If we do talk about it, we're we're adding light to the to their nonsense. Yeah. Um, so it is a very delicate line, and I don't think this is something we should be talking about every episode. But given Haley's uh, personal connection with this and whatnot, and I, I think it was it was good to bring up now. I do. Um, but but I don't really think we need to dive like no much no further than than this no. unless uh, Delvin Jr. has some comments uh, about before Delvin it. Jr. chimes in. Here's the here's the new deranged email I got like just now. Uh, final barrage for the animation industry diverting my teenage attempt to make half-life 3 and advance friendship and creativity worldwide that is the header of this deranged email by the way i do not work in animation what yeah. are you fucking dorks on about i do inventory for a living the fuck are you doing this is a, a great thing that Tara says. I think she, I agree with it. One of the yes. ways to help mitigate the issues to focus on those hard by their words and actions. I agree with that 100%. Help those. That's a good angle. By, yeah. Yeah. For absolutely. sure. Yeah. Yes, Dev. I agree. Uh, no, for, for sure. Like these idiots are all, all about there. But like they're again. So like again to br- like to talk about it. Like uh, these people somehow convinced themselves that fucking um, Saga Anderson was um black because of sweet baby when no remedy was like hey we did this um 
but like, yeah, no, it's just. I, I, I can, I've had an issue this past week that was not similar, but close enough. I made a comment, Mm -hmm. an innocent comment about (laughs) why did I do this? I forgot. You can't, you can't speak on social media about your opinions about the, 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 uh, the Snyder Cut of Justin League being too long. Oh, and yeah. When I made that comment, the amount of FUs and slurs I got called oh. just for saying a movie was long. Uh, was you're not even wrong. That, that movie's fucking four up hours up. and 25 that, minutes long. Just, just to back you up a bit, Dad. Um, that movie that I love. It's coming from the one who loves Snyder Cut. That that movie's way too long. That movie yeah. should not be four it, it hours ma- long. It, it doesn't matter if it's long, long or not. It's the whole thing is you shouldn't be harassed <laughs> for just stating your opinion. Not yeah. even like a harmful opinion. You know, yeah. it's just one of those things that um uh, people just kind of do now. I, what I've did, what I learned to do is just like I don't have time for it anymore. I just block them, block them, mute them, fuck off. I can't. I'm not gonna sit here and go back and forth with you. On an opinion, especially that opinion isn't anything that's harmful or mm-hmm. harassing or degrading anyone in any type of form or fashion. Now, I think people need to just kind of do the same. Ignore these clowns who do this type of stuff because they're gonna keep doing it because they like to get the rise out of people. You know, it was it was nuts. <laughs> I'm not so, lie. Was... No, no, for sure, Donnie. That's right. fair. So for anyone not here, Don Delvin Jr., I'll let you speak in a second, just saying. Um, but like for for those not here, Donnie said they made a curation page. There's thousands of Steam curator pages against specific developers, publishers, genres, people, etc. It's hardly harassment to say you don't want to buy anything from an outlet. And then Donnie goes on to continue and say, not defending the dorks, as you say, just pointing that out. If folks don't want to buy things from SBI, they're free, no, free to not do that. Doesn't need to be a big deal. But of course, Twitter is going to Twitter. So there's, yeah. The difference there, though, is that this has become harassment from these dorks, and I will continue to call them dorks. I know you're not defending them. Don't worry, Donnie. Yeah. Um, but they are dorks. They're fucking idiots, actually, but uh, that's besides the point. The difference there is that a couple of the people who run this curation page were interviewed, and it is harassment, specifically against black people and people of color, like other people of color and queer folks like they were literally interviewed by Khalif Adams for anyone who doesn't know like Khalif Adams interviewed like the main guy doing this he's just a fucking idiot and it is targeted harassment like th- this is a clear difference like that's why this one specifically is being called out because yes you're, you're right there are a bunch this one however violates the terms of service because it's harassment and technically racism but he didn't use the racism on steam. So steam hasn't taken action yet, but they kind of should because he's actually outed himself as like, Oh yeah. The whole reason I do this is because I don't like black people or women in my games. Well, fuck him. I yeah. Don't give, I don't give this cocksuck anymore. Like honestly, fuck no, him. this, this whole situation sucks. And again, the only reason I want to talk about it is because yeah, these dorks are targeting me. Yeah. Uh, I'm fine, but you know, as long as you're okay, that's what matters. Devil, anything you want to say about this? Before I get off this topic. Yeah, uh, a, a lot actually, uh, but I'll make it as quick as possible. Um, so how I personally found out about the sweet baby ink situation was, um, I guess I guess in its early stages with like, cause I've watched, I I watched someone named Some Ordinary Gamers and I watched his video talking about it. And if you want to watch it, um, go check it out. It's a decent like it's a decent like breakdown of basically what's going on at its early stages. Because holy crap, I did not know about any of, any of these. Um, but basically how I was made aware of that was from that video and also something I was telling about that there's a game that's coming out that is affiliated with these that a lot of that conversation from Sweet Baby Inc. from it's getting take up with Sweet Baby Inc. stuff which to me is like come on man uh the game is Tales of Kanzara Kinze- Zer- Rosal oh, yeah. I hope I did not butcher that but but um essentially my whole thing is like if if you want to have like a genuine calm civil conversation about diversity in games and like how it should be done that's fine and i think what sweet baby Inc. promotes is a good thing like more diversity in games 
that is something everyone could get behind. And and if these were like if these were like people were like, hey, you know, this is kind of like not great, that's fine. It if it's like straight up harassing people, that is not good. That is bad. That is really bad. And like I do want and like, you know, the one thing that I that I personally like doing my own research on like food baby and guy, I found out about like um that's one one of like the main reasons why some people like are harassing them, besides the stupid reasons, were like um that a lot of like the, the higher ups of were apparently bad people, like, oh no, a game company is bad. Oh my god. And to me it's like Oh oh dear, I must go to Activision to, to cope with this. Like, is this worth like all the harassment? Like, if you want to boycott a game. That's completely fine. I have nothing against you. In fact, more power to you. Because usually, usually like, if I find out a company is doing something garbage, it sucks, yeah, but, you know, what are you going to do? But, like, if, if you want to boycott that company because you don't support what it does, do it. Do it silently and do it with just for you. But don't go harass people just to put your, quote-unquote, to put your, quote-unquote, like, agenda out there. Because, like, this whole conversation with like woke stuff, like the quote unquote woke stuff, is so on to me because, like, to me, there is no forced diversity, there's only bad writers or like bad, poorly written stuff. So, that's it to me. That's it. And, and if you want to have a conversation about like diversity and how it should be handled, do it in a very a respectful way, don't go and harass people, but or like get upset at this company who realistically probably don't even know you exist this just because of it like again if you want to boycott it that is your decision but if you are going to go like basically bully people until they like like maybe you have a point with this that's not good that's just basically how i think about it huh. yeah yeah <laughs> all right if that's also before we get off this topic no, these people um, are idiots, and I'm ready for questions. I don't know about you all. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. I'm so sick about hearing this goddamn topic. All right, go go play the uh go play the demo of go play the demo of, of Tales of Kenzaro. It's genuinely a really fun demo, which is why I pre-ordered it. All right. Let's get these questions. Our first question. Shit, I don't know if I want to use this one first. <laughs> <laughs> let's, do Donnie's let's, let's do Donnie's first. Let's do yes. Donnie's first. Yes, let's use Donnie's first. Donnie asks, "How big will the PS5 Pro be?" Uh, five feet tall. Five feet actually, tall. Actually, dude. no. no. <laughs> uh, how are you? Five through foot a fucking seven. door, dude. Five foot seven takes up a, takes up the whole wall. Takes up the whole wall. It it's still it's still loud. It's not it's not at all more powerful, but but it is bigger. And bigger is bigger in every case. So I, 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 I love some Moira about that. Just saying, I have, I have some shtick huh? for this. Uh, Who is it? So the PS5 Pro, it's so big. <laughs> How big is it? It's so big city mayors are planning to use the PS5's Pro as an affordable housing alternative for low-income families. All right, we're closing this podcast. Enough of this, enough of this shit. <laughs> we're done for the day. I won't ask no. no questions. We're done. That's, no, that's, no, that's, no, that's, no, that's, no, no, we're not ending there. We're not that's ending that's there. Uh, I, I think it's going to be bigger than the standard PS5, to be honest. That's a terrible answer. Here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't go with a joke <laughs> answer. <laughs> I'm not a fucking marketing genius. Haley, uh, <laughs> sometimes your autism drives me crazy. <laughs> autism. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he meant for you to answer the question. All right, all right, let me let me go. <laughs> Yeah, I, thought, thinking, I, I, right? I thought this was way we, open we, for dumb jokes. Enter the snurts. Like, <laughs> this is going to be exactly 0. .5. <laughs> he asked the question. I don't fucking. Oh what do you want from me? <laughs> oh my god. Let me, let me uh, put something, you guys. Let me let me put something, you guys. Um, so we got the PS5. You know, PS5. You know, uh, you know, basically the same amount of size as the Ethernet port, not Ethernet port, the router, 
whatever it's called. Uh, you have the PS5 Pro. Um, six five. It's a five. It's a good five nine. You know, stop. Mike, it's a good stop. five nine. Why are you talking <laughs> the way Ben Shapiro does? Yeah, I don't know, but he needs to stop that shit. Absolutely. So, so did so got destroyed with facts and logic. <laughs> oh, Ben, you, wow. No. I'm moving right. on. Moving on. Ben, you release the next ben, question. You release the PS6, and that thing, the PS6, where it's as tall as Shaq himself. It takes you can just leave it on the floor, and it'll fill up the entire room. <laughs> that is what the PS. That is the PlayStation brand making useless products. Thank you. Next Thank you so time question. <laughs> Our next question from Smoking Joe. Keep it up with the PS5 questions. What features would you need to see from the PS5 Pro to make it a day one purchase for you? Make it day uh, one buy. Size. Did really, really? <laughs> we moved on to you. <laughs> First fucking game that was uh, okay. Um, what features do I need to see? Yes, they oh. have to be there. Uh, let me let me get six dollars. Yeah, I know he made that joke earlier because Canadian are funny money. Uh, <laughs> no, he's dying uh, for the actual price. Yeah. It's just fucking. U.S. dollar, four thousand dollars. Oh, that'd be like fucking like sixty five hundred uh, here. I think I Jesus. Uh, I don't really I need to see anything. I, I want. I'm gonna get it day one. I know I'm gonna get it day one. Uh, Do you? But yes, absolutely. <laughs> Why? Why would I not? Dude, I. I'm not saying you won't, Haley. I'm just okay. saying if there's a, let me let me ask you this, Haley. Uh-huh. What's the price point where you'll be like, absolutely not. I'm not buying this day one. This thing, if this thing is nine hundred dollars before taxes, no. It might be. It wouldn't surprise me. Right. It would not um, surprise me. I don't think I would. I don't think I would buy a PS5 Pro mainly because I don't think it's necessary to be honest. Like the PS5 is, or you don't have money in its own, and I yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that little factor. <laughs> You don't have five hundred dollars, so I'm yes. I'm gonna be out of that house by. I'm gonna be out of that house by the time, by the time the PS5 Pro comes out. Yeah, which means you no, got rent, not. buddy. You got yeah. rent. Rent and bills. Yeah. Also, the fuck you mean you're moving out by November? Excuse me. It's coming out in November. Yeah, it's coming out this year, dude. Yeah, that's the rumors, right? It looks that's like it's coming in for the Q4 holiday season. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's you're gonna make that money. So I got more shtick whenever you guys are ready. I, yes, yes so. Okay. So for a PS5 Pro, I would like a virtual girlfriend, a la Krieger from Archer, preferably with a sexy accent. Uh, so if I get that kind of sexy assistant going, that'll be worth it. And if uh, alternatively, and this is the more serious thing. If I could turn in my current PS5 and get a Pro for a hundred bucks, I'd do it. But so that that Game but I'm not gonna. Ha- yeah, GameStop you know. here usually does deals like that. Not not for a hundred dollars, but like you get like a decent chunk off the price. That'd be yeah, cool. I mean, it would have to be like I'm serious, like a hundred bucks. I've spent already too much money updating my entertainment center, and I just got a PS5 a few years ago, so I, I'm I'm good. I'm chilling. AI Eve, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like it. yeah exactly. That's right, Don. To, to quote one Mr. Delvin Cox, I woke up, I saw ass. Yeah. Yes. That's a great quote to say for about second. Um <laughs> that does remind yeah. the Snarks, it's funny you mentioned that because it does remind me of of a game, a canceled Xbox game. Um if you want to read up on this, you can go check it out on nscene 60 Stop. If you say Stop if next. you say the uh, word should... scale bound, I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> If you say the word scale no, bound right now, I'm gonna bound. kick your ass. <laughs> no. It's not scale bound, I swear. That game shook with these decades looks so good. But <laughs> that's Don't it. I'm kicking your ass. ass. <laughs> Look. I'm gonna tell you. It's funny you mentioned that because <laughs> Go ahead, Delvin. Uh, I was gonna say I was gonna say, like, there's a cancel. It's funny you mentioned like the sexy girl AI because like there's a canceled Xbox game game 
um, that was going to be designed similar to Hey You Pikachu called X Girl, where you could take your girl on dates. And it's how do you know about this dope. game, Delvin? I look up Chanto's <laughs> video games all the time. I like knowing about things I shouldn't. Yeah, I, I see that. Yeah, very like, clearly. Uh, the green, like the like the green room, nineteen seventy two. Don't look that up. I found you in a Scott the Walls video. Please, I'm innocent. It was right. a Scott the Walls video. All right, I know how to get how to get me a day one on this PS Five Pro. Uh huh. Easy. Bring back the Sega Dreamcast classic, Sea Man. Sea Man what? too. What? <laughs> this is the most yes. random thing. I was waiting yes. for so what? much. What? I would not. That's not on my bingo card. Sea Man. Sea Man. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you don't. You don't remember the, the, the classic <laughs> Sega, Sega Dreamcast game with Williams? Well, 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 it wasn't Williams. It was I, the other one. Spock. Well, he was oh, a fish. Leonard, Leonard Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy. I am gonna find stuff that I don't want to see. Yeah, like, it was really? called Seaman. Seaman. <laughs> you were not talking. Add, to... They did not add jizz to the Dragon Dreamcast. No, you were. You, you talked to a fish. It was you... an AI fish that would answer your questions about life. You were. Oh my god, this correct. looks so weird. Of course. Of course. Delvin Junior. They did not add jizz music to the uh, no. to the second Genesis. It was a Sega Dreamcast. I said Dreamcast. Whatever. The they point had a microphone. Had is... <laughs> Seaman has released multiple times. No shit. Everywhere. How many? How many times would you say? <laughs> oh, at least once in '99, and another in 2001. <laughs> they released it. <laughs> I'm looking up the, like, it could have been more perfect I open up the Wikipedia page and it's like semen has been released multiple times I was like special edition it's freezing I think there was a special edition of semen yeah yeah <laughs> to quote one Archer uh, Sterling, a whole lot of hey, crazy. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. Game uh, of the year. Cool. All right. Our oh, next yeah. question is from Eddie V, Eddie Varnell from the Boss Rush Podcast Network. Eddie always comes up with the great questions. That's an awesome name. Yeah, Eddie V's my guy. That's my boy. Eddie says, do you think Sony will show what they have for 2025 this summer, and do you think they will revisit the idea of having Japanese first-party studios? Do you okay. think a new team ego should that. open? I would love that. that... I, I would love that. Is... That means we, I, I can finally get an Ape Escape remake. Uh, okay. a, Ape Escape is dead and never coming back. Much like if Bailey, strike one. It's my fucking show, dude. You're on strike one. <laughs> Uh oh. Here we go. Secondly, secondly, uh, will they revisit the idea of having having Japanese studios? I think the answer there is no, but not for the reasons you think. Um. So as <laughs> as um as folks know, a lot of their Japanese. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is Donnie. You're right. He is. Oh, he's, 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 he's taking my slogans. Um, at at the end of like life. Sorry, I got distracted <laughs> by Donnie's comment. Sorry. Let me start over. As folks know, Japan Studio was closed, and um, there's not really any first party studios in Japan. Uh, a lot of folks attribute the fact that fact to low sales, which yes, while true is that fact, but I don't think it's low sales of the games that is attributing to that. I think it is 
low sales of the console in Japan in general. The market has kind of shifted there. Um, it's it's not selling as well as it used to. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not Xbox levels of sales in Japan because that doesn't sell at all in Japan. But it's slowed down to where it's kind of made them like move all main operations to North America and Europe. Yeah. Huh. So I, I don't... Like, I feel like Japan... Go ahead, double duty. I was gonna say I feel like a main reason why like the sales in Japan have kind of plummeted a bit is because like the Sony's kind of shift like shift into like more story narrative games that I don't think appeals that much to Japan to the Japanese audience. Um, okay, yeah, that, 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 that that's a fair assessment, but this slowdown started happening mainly due to uh, not being able to get supply into Japan. Um, at launch, and it has they haven't caught up, and that is kind of why they're slowly moving operations out of Japan. Um, it's possible, I just don't think so. Yes, Switch, yeah, Switch is, is still answer. Switch is staying strong, um, as well. Um, Japan and is, loves yeah. the Nintendo Switch, that's the answer. Switch and mobile, yeah. So that's that topic do i think sony will reveal what they have for 25 maybe not all of it but i definitely feel like some of the stuff they have for 2025 will be revealed later this year yeah my assumption was we're going to see something in the showcase during the summer you know like they kind of have a light lineup for 2024 so eventually they're going to need to show off something to keep people's hype going and interest in pending games and uh i i didn't know anything about the japanese market um and i was kind of surprised because i you know sony is part is a global company I, I thought japan would be a rich market for it to tap into um and and it's a little surprising that there aren't any kind of li- at least one japanese studio uh, but you know it's the, that them them's the breaks yeah it just they kind um, of went away what, what else was gonna say delva I, I feel i feel like um i feel like a big reason oh. <laughs> I feel like a big reason why there isn't, like like I said earlier, I feel like a big reason why there isn't that many like Japanese studios for Sony anymore is mainly because like I feel like that the shift between Sony, like Sony, like the shift of Sony is like more experimental side than like for like the PS PS one PS one all the way to the PS three, it's kind of like to like more narrative games that kind of like has like I, I feel like has a big impact to that where and like as for like the other question for like if there well, I think I like Donnie says they they make western leaning games now. That's where their money that's where their money is. They close Japan Studios. Yeah, that's pretty much yeah. Essentially. Um but back to what I was saying. Um I feel like I don't know if we'll get anything in the summer, like any announcements. I feel like definitely like end of like probably like in September. That probably, like, if I was gonna guess, like, we'll guess probably get like a PlayStation showcase, but like, I don't know if anything in the summer will get any like big announcements because, like, last year they didn't, because like last year they didn't really announce anything that huge, huge because mainly because they were focusing on like Spider Man 2 and stuff. If anything, I feel like they'll probably announce like, well, hey, Wolverine's delayed. Um, there is one thing I don't want to say it because, like, I know there is one thing that's supposed to come out this year. I I don't want to say it because it was a part of that huge insomniac leak, but I think they will probably announce that. Okay, so first off, um, that but... wasn't what you're talking about was quote unquote leaked by accident by themselves, not through the hack. If you're talking about what was in the new game plus update for Spider Man 2, that was not part of the leak. And um, <clears throat> as head of Sony, current head of Sony said, there are no major first party IP this year. Correct. Correct. So I could have. Mm. I'll, du- I'll double check because I was kind of sworn there was like that leak had like. I don't want to say it, the game, but like, okay, hold on. You I'll can say, say the I'll, name I'll of the game if you're talking about I, Venom. That's next year. That's not this year. Venom is next year. Ah, uh, okay. My fault. I, I thought that was this year. That's my no. fault. No, no. Venom. Hey, maybe we'll, that will probably get announced. Venom was maybe we'll see it. Maybe we'll see a teaser by like you know end of year. Yeah. Yeah. You could like yeah. saying there's no point not saying the name of the game. We know what it is. Like it's unfortunate how we know it, but there's no point not saying it. 
As for the other thing, no, I just for anyone who is unfamiliar, when Spider-Man 2 launched its new game plus update, they accidentally left the debug menu in. And through accessing that, it's revealed that Spider-Man 2 will have DLC. Um, whether that's free or paid, we don't know. But there will be additional story stuff coming to Spider-Man 2 uh, because through the debug menu, people were able to access like all of it. Like, And I don't know if that's a big surprise it, but... at all because the first game uh, had three DLC packs. Which yeah. Correct, I, but those were, which I thought were fun. Those yeah. were announced like pretty soon after the game came out. It's sure. been sure, like sure. they were announced before Spider-Man One even had New Game Plus. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. So Spider-Man Two wasn't hasn't all, done that yet. So were, what? The DLC for Spider-Man. Well, like the DLC wasn't that also Spider-Man like, One? No, that, 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 that one. No. Oh, okay. For two. Yeah. No. That was my fault. No, that wasn't in the. Hat. I remember like seeing a red map. I've never seen a nope. map for it. That's why I asked. It was just their game release. Yeah, I think they had map. a route map. I don't think it, it, it leaked though. No, yeah, yeah but it did put a route map for it. Anyways, regardless, um, I think we'll hear about Ghost of Shima two later this year. Um, yeah. Let's get to these two. We got two more questions. I'll do, do Matthew's on now and do Ken's on after that because I think uh, Ken's on is really interesting. Matthew asks, what influence has online play had on the gaming community? Do you think it has positively or negatively affected the gaming community and why? I think we talked about that a little, little bit today, so we'll just get into it a little bit more. I'll start because everybody was talking all the time. <laughs> I think uh, much like social media <laughs> in general, online in general has had a I want to say a net neutral effect on um, society. I feel like I've had, I've had plenty of friends who've had amazing experiences online gaming and things like that. And I've had people who had awful experiences. But I think it's it's gotten to the point when it comes to online play and gaming and stuff like that. It's become so part of our culture. It's no escaping. Like, you know, look look at Fortnite. Fortnite's one of the biggest games in the world. Everybody their mom, like my son plays Fortnite countless hours. And people, that's how they that's how people communicate with their friends by playing Fortnite and things like that. And gaming is just so huge now. It's not just like the small scope that we once knew it as. It's so huge and so robust and so many people play it. And when you have so many people from different cultures and different backgrounds playing games you're gonna always have people who are rotten eggs and want to kind of spoil the sound of well and stuff like that i think it's up to you to kind of navigate through that and sometimes you're not going to navigate through it in a positive light you're gonna have to have to deal with horrible people it's just the part it's unfortunately much like with social media it's a it's kind of a part of the culture it's kind of part of what you take in when you want to get into gaming whether it's Video gaming with this on social media. I think the only thing you really can do is kind of just like just game with your friends. And even then, you're going to kind of run into your little circles of people who are going to be assholes. And I'm quite sure pretty much all of us have kind of experienced some sort of form of harassment online when it comes to mm -hmm. gaming and stuff like that. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, we don't even need to talk about it because it happened live on air. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's very well said, Delvin. Uh, to echo on that, I just I don't think it's an or; it's an and. It, yeah. You know, just yeah. like you're saying, like it's going to be both. And I cannot imagine the current, like the the way video games are without multiplayer. Like I, I just can't. You know, yeah. even back in the arcades, there was multiplayer. It just wasn't over the internet. Like it was just the person next to you. So, whenever you're playing games, it's fun to play with other people. Be that it is. on the couch, in the arcade, or online. And I think about games like World of Warcraft, Halo, Call of Duty, Left 4 Dead, Back 4 Blood, even more recently Helldivers. Like the, it is the multiplayer experience. There's, some of those have single player campaigns as well, but it is the multiplayer experience that makes those like the most special. I agree. Go ahead. Hannah. Yeah, yeah. Without um, I, without oh god, without online multiplayer, oh, which oh, wouldn't oh. exist. YouTube wouldn't exist like you like YouTube gaming. I mean, not YouTube itself. YouTube would have existed without it. But um, 
like all of the like current people that are able to like be influencers and whatnot, like they wouldn't have careers because of it. Multiplayer has, like we said, it's it's both. But honestly, I think I've experienced more positivity uh, than I have negativity when it comes to multiplayer. But I think that's mainly because of what I choose to play. Like I, I play COD a little bit, but I don't, I don't engage with the multiplayer a lot. I'm, I like the story. And then I'll occasionally dip in for a couple multiplayer matches here and there. But, like, you know, I met some incredible people playing Fortnite. Um, yeah. 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 And, and other stuff like that, right? I haven't played Fortnite in a while, but, like, you know. Uh, like, let's be real. The whole reason this show exists is because of multiplayer. Because, you know, I met all... Like I, I I met people from MTTG through multiplayer, and then I met you know Donnie and Kevin and everybody else, and you know, uh, I met you after. But yes, strong bonds, sir. Yes, strong well, and bond. Haley, um, our first experience talking to each other like was through Dead Island Two. So correct, you helped yes. me get my platinum. Yeah, so. yeah, and I can't think of like when, especially because World of Warcraft uh, is, is very front of mind when I think about this stuff. Like, we had nights where instead of us college kids going out on the town and and doing whatever college kids did back in the day, we were just raiding at, or or playing the the PvP maps and something like that. And I remember having very many late nights with a dozen plus people, just having a great time. Yeah, and it was very hard to explain to my parents why this like 18, 19 year old kid wasn't going out and like living life up as the youth of America and prefer yeah. to spend his time playing like Halo or WoW or something of that nature. So, uh, yeah, uh, Delvin Jr., what, what about you? What do you what do you think about the multiplayer question here? Um, no, uh, I never got the experience like call, like call multiplayer and stuff like that. But, like, I think like both like I think online play like in general was is like. It's a very huge, has like a very huge impact in gaming, like especially in the Xbox 360 and, and PS3 generation, um, like where people were playing, like obsessed with playing like Halo, Modern Warfare 2, uh, the Skate, um, you know, there were like a lot of like games that people were bounce, bounce, bounce around to, and that was kind of a way for like the player to engage, players to engage with, and then we move on to the PS4 generation, we have like stuff like For- Fortnite, which is something that I play play on a regular and i and i love Fortnite, and that's how i like connect with like some people i still talk to this day like um i remember i remember like i met i met a friend via like feel like via like a like a duos match and i remember like back when i used to used to have twitter uh unfortunately um that 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 account's gone now. Uh, I met my best friend, like from like our mutual bond between like you know for you know Fortnite and stuff like that, Fortnite persona, you know all that stuff. You know the uh, so, uh, online stuff in general has a huge impact on the way we talk to people now. You know? and you know that has good that has good effects. You know that has like good like effects to it. You know, you open up to people all around the world that you never would be able to meet beforehand now you can be like your computer or your phone or like your nintendo wii for all i know but um there's also like you know negative side effects to that where it's much easier to like say a bunch of things that some people don't mean some people really do mean and get away with it because you don't really have a face to connect yourself with with like of course people i'm pretty sure like Everyone knows, like, the, the meme at this point, like, don't get into an Xbox 360 <laughs> 60 party, you will be flamed up. But, but, like, and, like, it is funny to watch, like, some of those people, but there's also, like, there's also people who, like, say, like, a lot of things that are pretty hurtful, and they feel like they can get away with it because, you know, they, they ha- don't, they're hiding behind, like, a character or something like that. And, you know, you know, and, Let's, let's be a bit honest. Like some like reporting game game reports aren't really like the best, so they they just get away with it anyways. And like and like like Donnie me- like Donnie mentioned like in the chat, um, Twitch's whole existence is owed to online multiplayer. Like now, people who play games on Twitch or like YouTube or yeah, those are the only two streaming services. Nothing else. <laughs> um the amount of people who played on there 
you know, make their whole career from like playing our games online. Like, for example, Ninja, for example, like one of like the biggest Fortnite streamers, he made his whole career out of Fortnite. And man, like, he got to be in like movies, he got to be in like talk shows and stuff like that. That and say what you want about the guy, but that's impressive. Like, coming from playing a video game and like the. The internet in general it just changed a, way, a lot of ways to how we view our things and how we view like games in general, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like, here's a new one for you. It's, it's sort of stretching the limits of like online multiplayer, but like, as everybody knows, I'm excited for Dragon Dogma 2 on Friday. There's an entire subreddit just dedicated to people sharing their character creator designs because you can do some wild stuff with that character creator. Um, it's literally called Flash um, Fashion Dogma, and it's just people going, "Hey, here's a character I created in Dragon Sama 2. If you want to make the same character, here's all the sliders I used." Like, it's cool. Like, nice. There's been some like great like cool. communication type stuff like that, right? And then, uh, even though I'm not really a fan of Hell Divers, but like some of the stuff you see from Hell Divers community is is good too, right? Like, all of this stuff uh, is a positive, and then yeah, the negatives are there, but like. Gaming would be wholly different without it. Yeah, and maybe it's one of those things where, like, yeah. maybe, you know, a lot of times we think of the negative before we think of the positive as a human reaction. So, yeah. um, but but I, I, I don't want to get rid of it. I'd rather have the messy thing that we have and, and than nothing at all. Um, and, I, and, and Delvin Sr., your, your uh, comparison to social media is, is right on the money. Yeah. Hi. Our final question from Ken Bjorn Turner, a.k.a. Bjorn the Viking. He asked, what do you think is the future of gaming? Console, PC, virtual, neural link implants, and how soon are we all going to be like Ready Player One, the book version, not the movie version, because it sucks. And I can't. Okay, I've, I've read, I've not read the book or seen the movie. But I do have to say, before we even go any further, if you're dumb enough to get a fucking oh, neural link implant in your head, uh, Godspeed, soldier. That's all I got to say to that. Uh, you're, you're literally going to put a device in your head that melted monkeys' brains? Okay, cool. Go, go nuts. Look, um, Task but, Force X did it, so I don't have to. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, what do I think the future of gaming is? I think it's everywhere. I, I, I genuinely think it's like all of it. It's like PC, mobile. Like where you play is going to be pretty much wherever you want. Um, obviously, cloud is going to be a big part of that too. But I think internet infrastructure in certain parts of specifically the U.S. need to improve before that can become a mainstay. I think. To, to piggyback on what Haley said, I think she's right. I think the I think the future of gaming kind of sounds boring. It's exciting to an extent, but the future really is cloud gaming and the whole concept of wherever you want to play or whatever you want to play is what it's going to be. Like, hey, you can you'll be able to go to a hotel and just click on a button. You can like access a whole lineup of games or Netflix. Is, of games everywhere. I, I think, unfortunately, well, maybe unfortunately for some people, you don't like it. We're gonna be, we're looking forward to, towards a consoleless future. Hmm. It probably won't yeah. be any consoles anymore. Yeah. It'll be, be on your TV. It'll be, yeah, everything will be on your TV or, or your clouds and stuff like that. And you won't be necessarily buying games. It'll probably be subscription services like, hey, you Xbox Game Pass, and all the games are there and. I think that's kind of what we're leaning towards. I don't think people, I know people want to see the Ready Player One thing. I don't think that's a reason why I don't think that's a thing is because people are, we have sort of levels of that and people are like, we don't want that. Like we have, we have good VR. Like yeah. even if you want to take out PSVR 2, <laughs> take that out, like throw that shit in the trash. But the Quest is oh, pretty good it. VR. But people kind of don't want it, you know. And I think Donnie brings up a good thing, the Fortnite burst. People are more interested in playing Fortnite than living in that universe. So I think that's kind of the future. You yeah. Know, levels of that. To, yeah. to me, the, 
the, to me, the future of gaming, like, I can say the boring answer of, oh, it's probably going to be more of the same, but, like, I feel like, to me, I feel like the future of gaming is leaning more, like my dad said, it's leaning more towards digital stuff, and, like, you're pretty much soon, we're not going to be able to own consoles, compared to, like, physical stuff, and to me, that's terrifying, because I love, I love physical media. I, I love it to death. I collect CDs. I lost it. But, like, um... And to me, it kind of sucks to say that. Because, like... Like I said, I like physical media. Uh, but, also... It's gonna be tough when you... It's gonna be much harder to preserve some of that kind of stuff, you know? It's gonna be harder to preserve some of the, those games. And, yeah, like, for some more popular games, like... Let's say Alan Wake 2, that's digital only. Yeah, there's gonna be... A, of course, there's gonna be, like, people who are gonna dump... I'm not finishing that sentence. There are going to be people who are going to preserve it in a way where it's it, it will never get lost. But like, what about more in, indie titles? What about titles that may that will probably be lost forever, or games that games that could possibly be great that we'll never get to see because maybe it didn't sell well, or maybe it didn't, or maybe it wasn't backed up properly, or maybe there was a licensing disagreement. Like, look at the amount of games that are delisted that, that don't even have physical game products. And to me, that's terrifying to even think about because, like, I like because, like, I like physical media and I don't mind digital media. Like, it's not like something like, oh, I hate digital media, man. Why didn't they? Why didn't they get a physical release for Alan Wake to curse you, Epic Games? I shall rule. You should rule the day that you not made a physical run of Alan Wake two. Like, I think that's dumb. Like, there's a place for digital media. Like, it's nice to just boot something up and everything just works. But to me, like, there's always going to be a market for, like, physical stuff. There's always going to be those people like me who want to collect those things. And, well, yes, a lot of companies will just see, will just see, like, oh, like, the digital version of this game sells more. So what's the point of making the physical copy? There's, I feel like there's all, you're always going to, you're always going to make your, to me, like, you're always going to have, like, some sort of, like, pe- audience who wants that kind of media, you know? I agree. And I feel yeah, like I mean, it's kind of, of like a uh, vinyl. will lean more. T- yeah. Like, vinyl records, you know, like, they're not, like, the creme de la creme like that they used to be, right? But there's still a collector's market out there for it. Um and I know like myself, yeah. like I still have my Sega Genesis hooked up to my TV in the living room. So like I'm I'm a fan of keeping old stuff around for a while. But unfortunately, like the, just the way history works is we're not going to be able to keep all of it. Uh, and, and for some people, it's just going to be kind of like a fun hobby like you and the CDs yeah, versus like the actual like main bulk of the market. Yeah, like and I and I think back to like what Ubisoft said, which I think I still think it's a dumb statement, but. In a way, they're kind of right, where, like, they're not going to be able to own, like, truly own a lot of the stuff that sh- that you play. Like, a lot of the stuff that you want to play own, you're probably not going to be able to fully own that, because, like, this current market to gaming is slowly switching towards digital only. Like, PlayStation just launched a, a console where you could just remove the disk drive, and you don't need to use it. And Xbox is also... Kind of make, making a console that is apparently going to be digital only. And, you know, yeah. that to me is scary. That to me is scary for, like, not only for, like, me who, like, loves, like, useless pieces of plastic, but also but also in a preservation sense. Because, like, what's going to happen? What's How are we going to make sure that these games are, stay, like, playable for, like, years to come? You know? And, you know, that's just basically how I think. Okay. Anybody else have something to say about this topic? Yeah. Um, so I've seen Ready Player One, the movie, and I I thought it was fun, but I didn't read the book. So what the hell did I know? Um, you know, Steven Spielberg did okay. Uh, but I, and one of the things that cracked me up is I was surprised sucks. how many people like were still it. at. That's fine. I, I can be in the minority on this. Uh, I, I, I always thought that, like, if people were using, like, treadmills and stuff, they'd be more fit instead of just being, like, overweight sacks of meat on a, on a couch. Um, but uh, D Life, I, I think you were peeking at my notes somehow because I was thinking the same thing. I'm more interested in AR. 
I think it has some potential. Like if you have like a blank table and you can set up some kind of laser grid or whatever that makes an AR playable interactive experience, I think that would be really cool. Uh, I can see that definitely being applied to board games or like you're at a party and someone has an AR table set up and people can just kind of come and go and do whatever they want with minimal setup. Uh, I, I think that has some potential and, and I'm curious to see if that actually moves forward. Um, but but overall, Dove, and I, I thought you all were right, like what you're saying, it's going to just come to streaming. It's going to be a cloud-based. Uh, they already have TVs that have the Game Pass built in, ready to go. Um, and and that's probably more likely, but I, I would like to see something going with AR because I can imagine like someone selling like a stick or something like that that has on it like hundreds of board games like Battleship, like Tara mentioned in the chat. And you could just kind of play all these different games by spending like a hundred bucks or whatever on this little device that'll project something onto a flat surface for you. You know what that reminds me of? What's the Star Wars game they play with the holograms? This is Star Wars. Oh, uh, like Space Chess, essentially. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that is exactly it. Yeah, yeah, that's a yeah, form of Hollow tactics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, the oh, time, let, let let the Wookiee win, right? That exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that that is augmented reality, as far as I can tell. Um, but like that, and I think that has potential. That looks cool. Yeah, I'd play that. Yeah, me too. Also, when 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 uh, this question came up, the first thing that came to my mind was um, Back to the Future Part Two, uh-huh. where um, Marty's in the um, that cafe eighties. And oh, yeah. he, he walks up to the Wild Gunman game. He's like, hey, I used to play this when I was a kid. What now? The Wild Gunman game. And no, he, no, he, no. I've not watched ba- the Back to the Future movies. <laughs> yeah. oh, what is wrong with you? Uh, Haley, come on. All right. Thank what you, guys. You? No, we're in this podcast. I'm not, not doing this. No, 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 no. no. I've, <laughs> I've been through enough today. Thank you, explanation. No, no, wrapping it I, up. Nope, wrapping it up. What? The explanation is up. fuck this. When the okay. okay, actual fun fact. Uh, I genuinely, ge- genuinely, like, just don't have interest in them. I'm sorry. I don't. So. In Back to the Future? Yeah. How is that a fun fact? That is a fun fact. How is that a fun <laughs> fact? Because fun literally fact. I get mocked for not knowing. I understand why they're popular. I just am not interested in watching them. Fun fact. We're in this pod- podcast. <laughs> That's the fun fact. Fair enough. God damn it, you people. Thank you guys for listening. Delvin, tell everybody bye because it's your last time calling this podcast because every time you want to hear now, it's three hours long. <laughs> <laughs> also, Delvin Jr., go look up the green room, 1972. <laughs> he's over here right now. I don't know why he's over here. He doesn't. It crashed. It crashed. That's perfect thing to do. <laughs> he said, she said nothing. That's what she said. She uh-huh. said nothing. She said nothing. Bye. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. We're at the end of the show. Thank you guys for the show. Thank you guys for the show. Why am I hearing your headphones? That's it. Bye. End the show. Peace out. Peace out.